What's up, Squiddy? Thanks for the ride. Oh, oh let me get, get this skirt tucked correctly. There we go. Oh, one sec. Oh, there we go. Oh, I'm working on my forearms. Um, yeah, trying to trying to rehab my forearms so that they can. Um, take the load from the TFCC because I've got a torn TFCC uh, triangular fibrocartilage complex 
um, which basically makes handstands and climbing extraordinarily difficult, if not impossible for me as it stands, but I might be able to offload to the forearms. So yeah, I've been working on that a little bit. Um, see if maybe one day I can hit a climbing gym again. That is if my ankle ever heals properly. Just stacking those fucking injuries, just stacking them. Um, um, yeah, I mean, you know, fucking Alex, uh, Alex fucking, um, had, uh, um, I think a, a wrist injury. I think he shattered his wrist. Um, I think it was a wrist. Yeah. Yeah, it was his wrist. Okay. Um, sorry, for those of you that don't speak climber, uh, Honold, Alex Honold. Uh, I'm not talking about Kaz. <laughs> um, yeah, he absolutely shattered his fucking, like, wrist um, three times. Um, and he's still, I mean, he's setting speed records on El Cap and shit still. So maybe there's hope. Maybe there's hope. Uh, bone set, though. Cartilage. Cartilage doesn't heal. Look at you, Zartos. You're almost old enough to drink. <laughs> oh, he says knowingly. Um. Yeah. Especially in your part of the world. It's kind of frowned upon, too. Um, it's 18 there. Well, good on you. Yeah, Zart Zartos, for those of you who don't know, Zartos is Turkish. Um, uh, you Europeans, I love it to death. Um, now, if only y'all would get some weed culture going. Like, Turkey has, like, some weed culture. It's the fucking Europeans that are shit on that one. Get some, uh, get some fucking cannabis going and call me. Oh, I know Turkey does. Turkey's got fucking weed. <laughs> Turkey's got the hookup from like antiquity. Turkey's got the hookup. Yeah, it's the fucking Europeans who have no weed culture. They they they're always just drunk in the pub on the weekend and shit. It's fucking honestly, I'll take the weed culture over the drinking culture any day of the week. Oh, tech support, tell me about it. Fucking tell me about it, man. Oh, fucking um. Yeah. Delt's a little sore. I mean, not from specifically, but yes. Y yes. 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 What's up, Carpe? Um, I mean, there's a region we call it Kush. It's from the Kush Mountains. It's fucking, dude, it grows wild in Afghanistan. You just go up to the fucking mountaintops in Afghanistan and it's just fucking weed as far as you can see in some fields. Shit just goes wild. The only reason I hesitated is because hashish predates turkey. <laughs> That's, hashish doesn't, does, doesn't really come from turkey. Turkey comes from hashish is sort of the order of operations on that one. Right? Like, it predates them as, a, as, a, as a, a modern concept, at least. Not the people themselves. Yeah. Um... So that's the only reason I hesitated. <laughs> yeah, fucking, yeah, t fucking hashish predates turkey. <clears throat> no, no, uh, it, Caboose, it's K-U-S-H. That's Kush. Yeah, it's the Kush mountain range. You love to see it. I know, right? Typing still off, still, still fucking. The hands are still in like lift mode. The Kush range like goes into the Himalayas, I believe. Pakistan, um, Afghanistan, uh, India. Um, yeah. Um, yes, 
God, it's been years since I've seen Midnight Express. 76, something like that? 78? 78. Um, yeah. Yep, Carpe. Um, hashish out of Turkey. Why is your leggy hurty? Um, yeah, it's been years since I've seen it, but like that's quality, like that's considered classic cinema territory now. Uh, I hesitate. I always hesitate to call it that, just because that's not you. That's not agreed upon by all the tribes. <laughs> like all the fucking certain ones called it that, but others didn't call it that. <laughs> so it's just sort of, oh, it feels it feels gentrifying, but in a weird reverse way somehow. Tech support, like that's it feels like reverse gentrification or something. <laughs> It feels weird. It feels weird. Um, but, um, redo the sound of music. Um, the Kush Mountains. Yes, Zartos, I have heard that. Um, as well. Oh, for fuck's sake. I'm not dealing with that shit. Go fuck yourselves. Um, give me a brief history here. Because I'm pretty sure... Can, can we, can we... There we go. Where did it grow wild exactly in North America is my question. Was it was it disparate or was it localized? I'd love to know that. The hills are asleep with the smoke of cannabis. Um I think it's a I think it's an urban legend. I think it's a myth, Sartos. I'd have to double check, but I'm pretty sure it's a myth. Um, so yeah. Oh, 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 come on, there we go. Um all right. First off, so it was on anarchist, uh, one of the anarchist subreddits today, right? And somebody was talking about like they were talking shit about the end caps. They were they were talking shit about the end caps, saying that they're like the lonely kid in school nobody likes, but he thinks he's better than everyone else, right? Um, and so there was a whole bunch of like break off conversations that happened in other places and stuff. And somebody pointed me to a five-year-old post on the ANCAP subreddit that is fucking hilarious. Um, look, insert all legal disclaimers here insert fucking clauses to not do X, Y, and Z, right? All right. This ANCAP went to Europe, went to France, Italy, then Greece, and decided to hook up with some Greek anarchists. All right, so for those of you who know the, like, anarchist milieu, right, as to who gets up to what, these days, right? There's sort of an order of operations on who don't fuck around. And the Greeks are up there, right? They're, they're, they're up there. <laughs> um, well, see, that's the thing is... <laughs> he thought he was. <laughs> they disagreed. Um, I'll read it for you. It's fuck it because it's hilarious. I think it's I think it's absolutely fucking hilarious, right? Because this is this is look this is a bunch of Greek fucking anarchists, right? Like, holy shit, man! 
Like, you don't fuck around with them. That's like going to Colombia and hanging out with, like, or Argent- uh, Argentina or Chile. Yeah, I'm going to go hang out with some Chilean anarchists, and I'm a fucking ANCAP, right? T- homie, 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 homie. I'm worried about you. Like, I'm legitimately worried about you. Don't don't go hang out with some Chilean anarchists, right? You're not an anarchist. And when they find out you're a capitalist, they're not going to be happy, right? Like, Holy fuck, man. Right? It, it, it's you don't you don't fuck around with certain groups, right? You just got to you just got to know what's up with the anarchist middle view when it comes to that sort of thing, right? <clears throat> I did France and then Italy and then Greece next. I'm an ANCAP, so I wanted to see anarchists in these places. Yes, I know there's different kinds of anarchists. Keep in mind, he th- he believes he's the only real anarchist in this story. Right. Yes. Yes. The American Republican hanging out the Irish uh, Catalan Republican meme. Basically, basically, he legitimately believes he's the only real anarchist in this story, by the way. I'm not kidding you. This is good. This is fucking great. It's great. Um, uh, Yes, I know there are different kinds of anarchists and not really full anarchists like us. Homie. I went to an anarchist bookstore in Italy and it had lots of English books, but no Rothbard or ANCAP. Hmm. 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 Really? Sign number one that you ignored. Sign number one. Just so you know, that was your first sign you you paid no attention to. Uh, Hey, Anita. I went to Greece, which everyone knows is famous for its revolutionary anarchism, its economic crisis and everything going on right now. Remember, five years ago. (coughs) Here I found directions for a local anarchist center. I went and didn't see anybody. But it was covered in graffiti, mostly in Greek, so I couldn't read it. Yeah, it basically said, fuck off capitalists. I I assure you that's what it basically said. (laughs) Whatever, I started taking pictures. Love to see the fucking pictures. Then some people came out and confronted me. Sign number two. Sign number two. We're going to ignore sign number two. All right. This should have been my first warning sign. No, homie. That was your second warning sign. That something was not right. Because photography is not a crime. Hmm. Can't imagine why a bunch of fucking anarchists are curious as to the why the white dude who doesn't speak a lick of their native language is photographing their uh, their facility, right? Can't imagine why they might confront that with a level of hostility, right? Yes. Um, they were not violent, but they were not friendly, like asking who I was and what I wanted. They all spoke good English, actually. You mean they all spoke English well, unlike you? Not uncommon in Greece. I said I was a tourist and an anarchist, and I just wanted to take pictures. Then they got friendly and told me, oh, yeah, Lennon, he fucking, he, he whines about that too. He whines about that too. It's fucking amazing. And told me I should have asked first, but pictures are no NAP violation, so I don't know why, but I didn't say anything, and they invited me inside. This motherfucker doesn't get it, right? Like, this motherfucker legitimately doesn't get it. Like, as soon as I got to the end of that paragraph, I'm I'm, I'm rolling in my seat. Like, I'm literally just laughing my ass off as I'm reading this. And fuck, I'm like, this is... Th-. I went back and thanked the dude who pointed it to me, pointed it out to me. The non-aggression principle. It's a good idea in, 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 in mind, um, Cupcake. Basically, you don't fuck with me, I don't fuck with you. But... It, There's limitations to it, and as a concept, it's generally the property of the right libertarians and that sort of thing. So it's sort of a red flag when somebody does it if they don't couch it and a whole bunch of other shit, right? I literally went back to the dude who pointed this out to me. I'm like, thank you, (laughs) right? Um, We hung out for a while and smoked hash. There's no good dank in Europe. As you might find out, like in uh, in Cali, everyone smokes hash with tobacco, which isn't as cool as it sounds, all right? Dank, Cali. This is a white dude, right? Like this is a white dude. This is a fucking tech bro from California who has gone on a European adventure and washed up on the shores of revolutionary Greek anarchists. He's also a capitalist. He does not know what he just walked into, right? <clears throat> 
We started talking about politics and anarchism. I was talking, uh, I was trying to talk about the state, and they were like, "Yeah, no doubt the state's bad," but they wanted to talk about capitalism, this capitalism, and uh, and that. Yeah, homie, I can't imagine why. Fucking Greek, credit crunch, the dissolution of their economy, this, uh, the, uh, you know, the the subjection to European rule due to banking measures. Oh, I can't imagine why they were they had a little little you know little bee in their bonnet about capitalism at the time. This is when we started to get into a debate. Imagine. Being so unaware of your circumstances, being so situa situationally unaware that you started to argue. It wasn't a debate. It was an argument and you know it. He started to argue by his lonesome in a foreign country with a bunch of revolutionary anarchists over whether capitalism is a good thing or not. Homie. Jesus Christ. I told them that what they called capitalism is different from the free market. What, they said capitalism is free markets, and I said, I agree. This is, uh, that is what I am saying. Real capitalism is free markets. And they said, yes, that's what we're trying to get rid of. <laughs> Like, yes, exactly. Yeah, that's what we want to get rid of. Danger, danger. Stop talking. Right? And I said, no, but we don't even have that right now. We need more free markets. And everyone at the same time was like, no, we're anarchists. We're against capitalism. Anarchists oppose capitalism. Oh, really? The revolutionary Greek anarchist fucking commune you basically stumbled into because you're too fucking dumb to realize what's going on was vehemently opposed to capitalism. Oh, please tell me, privileged white boy from California, that you're going to try and belabor this point and you're going to try and argue with these, well, Greek anarchists who have seen the real side of direct action, I'm sure. Please, please continue on with your story and i said but not anarcho capitalists anarcho capitalists are the anarchists who support capitalism i had a fanny pack he was wearing a fanny pack for my camera and in that, I had this yellow and black bow tie, also super lame. And it was a joke, but I wasn't wearing it. And I said, look, these are the ANCAP colors, yellow and black, like versus the communist red and black. Well, these guys had a lot of red and black in the building already, so I thought they would get it. I think this is when it started to get a really bad vibe, really tense in the air. This, this is where he, th he started to get a bad feeling about the situation. Not when he was at the bookstore and they had literally no Rothbard, literally nothing about fucking ANCAP bullshit, right? Not when they confronted him aggressively for taking photos of their facility. Either. At no point was any of that a red flag, right? Only now does he think it's starting to get really tense. Amorous? Go talk to an ANCAP. Right? The free market thing was funny. We disagreed, but I think they thought I was just confused. I mean, homie, you are. You are. You are. You are. Everyone was uncomfortable now. Good job. Then someone said markets won't work with democracy, and I said, exactly, that's it. Democracy is against anarchism. And they agreed and said, yes, we don't have real democracy, just governments, and we need more democracy. I said, no, we need less democracy. Democracy is the enemy. 
and we need to end democracy to have anarchy. And they're like, no, again. You know that thing people do in groups when everyone all says no or expresses some disapproval at the same time? Yeah, they did that. Unified. The group is unified against you. You, you danger danger right like danger one of them said but we do want to stop democracy and then they kind of spoke back and forth in greek i really didn't understand it and then they asked what i meant i said so i said okay i have the, i had the floor i was going to tell you tell them about ancapism And I tried to explain to them some Rothbard and Hoppe. I said the natural order in anarchy is that the best rise to the top. The markets pick who is best. They compete and are peaceful. They said, what do we want instead of anarchy? I said, we want private owners to own their land and businesses and to employ people. And they said, that's what we have now. I said, no, it would be even better. One of the guys said it was like feudalism. And I said, it's not feudalism. Eventually, one of the guys spoke up. And I thought he was Greek, but he spoke English perfectly, so he may not have been. He said he knew what anarcho-capitalism was and that we're basically fascists. He asked me if I thought everything should be private. And I said, yes. He asked me if I thought it, people were unequal. And I told him, yes. H homie, homie, homie. And that not everyone would have equal rights. I said, everyone has the right to own property and not be done aggression against. But that not everyone had to be treated equally by those owners. He said, what about immigrants and racism? And I said, that would not happen in a free market. But yes, property owners could be racist if they wanted to. They had to respect property. Then he called me a fascist again. Someone else said I was a fascist. And then basically all started shouting fascist at me. And one of them grabbed me by my wrists. They pulled me out the door. It was up three floors and basically drug me down the stairs on my back. It hurt really bad. And I remember yelling, you're going to love this. It hurt really bad, and I remember yelling, you're breaking the NAP! And things like that. Stop initiating force against me! Then they kicked me around on the ground in the hallway before they took my camera and threw me outside. I was crying and stuff. I just sat there. I was in shock because it was so sudden. Looking back, there were warning signs, though. I think they felt bad for me and gave the camera back, but when I looked later, they stole the memory card with all of my Greek photos. I would have taken the fucking memory card, too. So they initiated force and theft. They broke the NAP. I knew the left anarchists were not real anarchists, but I knew they would. I never knew they would do something that bad. I wasn't seriously hurt, just kicked around a little. Lots of bruises and little cuts. I'm fine, guys, so don't need to worry, but just needed to share this and get it off my chest. I'm so sad. I missed this five years ago when it was first posted. I am, I am legitimate. I would have been in that fucking subreddit laughing my ass off. I, I, I legitimately, I mean, it's like, it's, it's, yes, sweet. It's from the end caps. Yeah. Fuck dummy. Fucking dummy. I, 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 that's all I have. That's it. That's it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you want the comments, I mean. Top comment was, guys, I believe the story. Naive 19-year-old American kid with a rich daddy gets his ass kicked by Greek radicals. Absolutely happened. 
As for the stuff about him being attacked because he agreed with, disagreed with them, it's pretty clear to me that's not why this happened. As a few others pointed out, Greeks don't really have anarcho-capitalist movements and don't have the language or framework for reference of it. As soon as they got the general idea of what he was trying to say, they concluded understandably that he was basically, if not technically, a fascist and was sitting there inside their space posing a huge fucking security risk and he had pictures of their building. I feel for you, but you're breaking the NAP made me laugh out loud. You must be kidding. No, it just came out. I had been telling them you have to respect the NAP right before they attacked me. So it was right there on the tip of my tongue already. Under that was they're right. And caps are indeed fascist. Um, I hear if you shout, am I being detained? They have to stop and also tell you if you're a cop. One, one guy was a uh, non-aggression principle. Don't fuck with me. I won't fuck with you. It's the core of it, but it doesn't work that way in practice. Um, somebody suggested, uh, so visit Rojavad next. Like, please go elsewhere. We can't wait to hear about your next trip. Right. Hey, Viva. Awesome. Well done, those Greek anarchists. Amazing. Sounds like you had a good trip to Europe. Send him to Chiapas. <laughs> yeah, what does Zapatistas meet him? Um... Anarchists and leftist radicals are routinely targeted, beaten, and persecuted in Greece. If some rando right-wing extremist came into my leftist headquarters and began taking pictures, no shit I'd dispose of him, and most likely violently. I'm not putting my ass on the line for some tool who does stuff like this. Uh, it's, it's really, you're hurting me bad. I remember yelling, you're breaking the NAP. Just be happy you weren't seriously injured, and remember not to fuck around with real anarchists. This is like a KKK member waltzing into a Black Panthers meeting and expecting everything to go over fine. So there's some of the comments. I, I legitimately laughed my ass off. It, it was... Oh, it was a beautiful thing. I, I, I can't believe I missed that five years ago when it went up. But... I just love that you... I, I, here, if you want the fucking... Here, here, if you guys want the thread... Here... There you go. Some people accuse him of trolling. I, legitimately, though, I think he's just a dumb fucking 19-year-old tech bro from California who's traveling on daddy's money. Oh, J, J Miles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think it was the DNA. I think it was the fucking more, more likely the environment. Um, Waiter Zartos, good luck in class. Boston's kicking off, so you know. And then the Anarchist Book Fair is coming up soon, too, in Boston. So, if you happen to be around Boston, go say hi to him for me. All right. If he just shut the fuck up, he probably would have just hung out and had a good time. Um, I found a site last night. Anprim.org. There is an Anprim.org. It's run by four Dutch kids. I say kids because they self-describe as young. All right, four fucking Dutch youth run anprim.org. Oh, tech support, I wish it were. 
I wish it were. I've talked to enough of these assholes over the time. But here's the first, here's the first article that you should see. This went up November 5th. Uh, Carpe, less than you'd expect. Less than you'd expect. It's more, holy shit, what is wrong with these people than, than, than just racism. It's, it's, it's more, are they okay? <laughs> are the kids all right? Right? Now that society is finally losing patience with the unvaccinated, it's time to take, an, uh, 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 take on another group of selfish pe uh, people who uh, subordinate the well-being of the entire country to their own self-interest, the farmers. All right. First off, first off, since when do the Anprims get to talk about vaccination? Right? Especially with like, an mRNA vaccine, right? Like this is, this is high technology, right? Right. Like who, 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 I'm sorry, shut the fuck up. Right. Now that society is finally losing patience with the unvaccinated. Isn't vaccination completely like antithetical to your position? Uh, -oh. either way. Take it, it's time to take on another group of selfish people who subordinate the well-being of the entire country to their own self-interest, the farmers. <sighs> Appeared on stage in 2019 when they blocked roads with tractors, drove into town halls, and threatened politicians. If that's not a strong first impression, I don't know what is. But I, like many, began with a huge sense of solidarity and sympathy towards the farmers, partly through ignorance. Root, uh, rut, root, root day? I don't fucking know. Decades of neoliberal policies have harmed every aspect of society from the huge growth of homeless people to the infamous uh, par uh, participation law and, of course, the current situation in the housing market. Everything led back to Father Mark. I'm sure that's some fucking in reference for Dutch politics that we don't get. The farmers are obvious victims, thought a naive version of myself, that the farmers were one of the many victims who were one of the few to make a strong fight, uh, fist against the government was admirable. But nothing could be further from the truth. Soon the peasants showed their true face. Soon they were spewing silly statements like blocking distribution centers to cause a famine winter. Because nothing helps your image better than threatening the whole country with a famine. Also, not to be forgotten, of course, are their threatening house calls at the police address. The only thing the peasants lack are brown shirts. The only thing the farmers lack are brown shirts. I'm not going to go through the whole thing. I just had to bring this to the fucking forefront. And I mean, it, here's here like like I said, um Carpe. Um also when you go to their media Something comes up very quickly. That's not the only piece. Here's another one. Here's another one. Here's another one. Here's another one. Well, I mean, industrial society in the future, fucking, I mean, look. Ted Kaczynski is a fucked up story. I've talked about this at length. Right, Ted Kaczynski is a fucked up story. He didn't start that way. He's literally a victim of one of the MK Ultra programs of the U.S. Right? It, it is he? He used to be fucking. They his nickname when they fucking ran him through the program was lawful for fuck's sake. That's what they they gave him as a, a pseudonym when they were writing up the documentation. They literally fucked with this dude hard. They broke him. 
but the goal of the program that he was run through, basically he, they had him write out his ideology, his beliefs as a human being. And then the interrogators took that and the goal was to get him to flip on his ideology. They're, they were going to use full-blown CIA military interrogation tactics to get him to flip on his ideology. That was the goal of the program. And they wanted somebody who was so lawful, so mainstream, so status quo, that they literally found Ted Kaczynski, a mathematical genius who was so lawful, they called him that in the program, right? They literally called him lawful. Um, it had an interesting effect. He didn't flip on his ideology. What he did was double down on it. They broke him, but not of his beliefs. He, he believed that there was a problem with technology and industrialization that human beings and our ideologies and our psychologies couldn't catch up and couldn't necess necess uh, necessarily uh, moderate these technologies in an appropriate manner. And as such, we were subject to manipulation, corruption, corrosion, internally, externally, from this sort of these, uh, these elements of industrialized society. And instead of flipping on that, what he did was double down on it. He snapped and then doubled down on his beliefs and then believed at some point along the way that the only way he could um, shake humanity awake was to, well, a few people. So, this, 100% conspiracy, but if you pay attention to what happened with, with good old Teddy and the ramifications of what they did to him, and then you pay attention to other aspects and avenues of some of our uh, other side projects, shall we say, around the globe, moving forward from him. I'm just saying you might catch some similarities to how maybe um, while the goal of their program wasn't necessarily met, they did learn a few things in the process. And they may have put that knowledge to work elsewhere. Just saying. Um, Amorous, I mean, I wouldn't count him as, yes, yes. He's idolized amongst the, the prims. He's idolized amongst the prims, yeah. They, they count him as one of their own. And he, here's, here's, here's the weird part. If you read the, read the manifesto, it doesn't read crazy. That's the terrifying part. If you go to like goodreads.com and pull it up and pull up people's reviews of it, people are uncomfortable with how much sense it makes. It, 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 it's, it's uncomfortable when you read it. You're like, I, I, I really wish this guy was crazier, right? Like you, you really want him to be crazy. Because you know, like by reputation, what this dude did, you know what he got up to. And you're like, I need this manifesto to be like stark raving mad, right? Fucking bat shit. And you read it and you're like, oh, he's making a lot of good points. And like even, like I said, go to goodreads.com and fucking read people's reviews of it. People, the, people are uncomfortable with how much sense that document makes sometimes. It's like, ugh. This is, this hitting a little too close to the mark. Could, could we not have the crazy guy who bombed a bunch of people fucking making this much sense? Because that's really uncomfortable. <laughs> that's, you, you need him to be stark raving mad, but he's not, in, at least in his document form. In real life, yeah, he's batshit insane. The violent fucking criminal who fucking pipe bombed random people. Fucking nuts. But in document form, yeah, he's not crazy. And it's that's really uncomfortable to read. Amorous, exact I mean, yeah. I, it's <laughs> yeah, so I quote something about the genius insanity line. He was already, uh, by all accounts, a genius. He was a mathematical genius. He 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 was brilliant to start with. Yeah. And then 
the United States government fucked with him. Like, legitimately, like, MK Ultra fucked with him. All right? Like, hardcore. They put the screws to him. Um... Discord search has not been working well for me recently. Hey, Astral. He does. He has other books as well. Oh, fucking. Yeah. But Prims are obsessed with that dude. And like somebody pointed out, yeah, Carpe pointed out, he's got the off-grid cred. Um, he, 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 he lived off-grid in a fucking cabin. We have the cabin, by the way. I mean, I'm not kidding you. We have the entirety of the cabin. It's, it's, it's so fucking weird. Hey, fuck master. There's the cabin. Like, we, they, they took the entire cabin. <laughs> I mean, it's, that's, that's, yeah. It, it, it's, we have it. It's, it's, it's evidence. Um, it's this, this is where it was. All right. And they picked it up and fucking put it in a storage warehouse. And then the Montana Historical Society, I think last had it. fucking weird as shit man <laughs> <clears throat> so yeah that's the story of old old fucking teddy there i i um see if i can find the man all right uh because there it is industrial society and its future a caboose because the entirety of it was taken as evidence. They found it easier just to literally take the entirety of the cabin as evidence. Um, at the start of the Cold War, Henry Murray developed a personality profiling test to crack Soviet spies with psychological warfare and select which U.S. spies are ready to be sent out into the field. As a part of Project MK Ultra, he began experimenting on Harvard sophomores. He set one student as the control after he proved to be a completely predictable conformist. He named him Lawful. Long story short, the latter half of the experiment involved having the student prepare an essay on his core beliefs as a person for a friendly debate. Uh, um, instead, Murray had an aggressive interrogator come in and basically tear his beliefs to pieces, mocking everything he stood for and systematically picking apart every single line in the essay to see what it took to get him to react. But he didn't. It just broke him. It made him into a mess of a person and left him having to pull his whole life back together again. He graduated, but then turned in his degree only a couple of years later and moved to the woods where he lived for decades. In all that time, he kept writing his essay. And slowly, he became so sure of his beliefs, so convinced that they were right, that he thought that if the nation didn't read it, we would be irreparably lost as a society. So he set out to make sure that everyone heard what he had to say. And sure enough, Lawful's Industrial Society in its future has become one of the most well-known essays written in the last century. In fact, you've probably read some of it, but you know it better as the Unabomber's Manifesto. It's... They broke him. Yeah. 
the 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 blood that the that Ted Kaczynski shed is literally on the hands of the United States government. I I he needed to be like isolated. He needed to be withdrawn from society. We needed protecting from him for sure. Um, but he wasn't responsible. He wasn't. That was the doing of the United States government. Um, do the prims have some interesting ideas? Yes. The whole thing feels like a black and white fallacy rather than a viable approach to deal with technology. <coughs> it's completely fucking irrational tech support. Basically, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I, I in, If I were on that jury, I would have a very difficult time with rendering a verdict. I, 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 like, yes, we need, he needs sanctioning, right? Like, we need him in a mental institution. We need him taken away. But he's not the problem here. Like, once you know the details behind the case, it's like, he's not the issue, really. That's, that's some fucked up shit. That's some fucked up shit. We made him. The United States government made him. They took literally the most conformist status quo genius mathematician possible and fucking, fucking turned him into the Unabomber for fuck's sake. I mean, how much do we blame him for that? I'd, I'd, I'd only say, like, there's, like, one or two exceptions, but Deirdre, yeah, 99.9% .9 of the time. Yeah. <laughs> TED Talk. <laughs> it would be interesting. It would be interesting. I, I... Um, I'm pretty sure he's... Right? Where is where are they keeping him these days? He's at ADX Florence. Okay. He's at ADX Florence. Interesting. Bob Hood, who worked at the Supermax, where Kaczynski is held, said, if you actually met Kaczynski, you would find a very quiet, very recluse person who knows multiple, language, uh, multiple languages, and most of his days are spent reading books in various languages. I tried to figure out what connection I can make with him beyond saying, good morning, warden. He's very distant. Many of them will spend the whole day talking to you because they're lonely and they're locked up. Kaczynski? is in his own world. They broke him. They broke him. It's amazing. Uh, hey, Gayan. <clears throat> I, Beastical, I know. I mean, he was, by all accounts, a genius mathematician. Um, hey, Versa. Um, all right, so that's fucking but you know like i said like after they broke him we st he's he's he is dangerous he is don't get me don't get me wrong in any way shape or form ted gazinski is fucking dangerous as shit man this is this is a high functioning nut job right this is this is the kind of crazy you don't fuck with right he exists right we fuck the u.s government for creating him fuck 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 you fuck you fuck you but he exists all right Acknowledge the reality of the situation. Holy shit, get him the fuck out of here. Right? Like, he's super fucking dangerous. Right? This is a dude who, if he wants to do something, can do it. Um, I saw that, Karina. I saw the video of that. I thought, I thought of you when I saw that video. I don't know if I saved it or not.
Um, there it is. I had to fucking look up the spelling of your godforsaken town. Oh no, no, Versa, he wasn't, he was a genius and then the United States government broke him. So there's no debate about that. He's, he's legitimately like he, he's a mathematical genius. He's a genius in his own right across the board. Um, but yeah, the U S government made, uh, made him the problem he is. Um, there it is. Found it. Oh, did anybody see the fucking New Zealand anti-vax protesters or anti-lockdown protesters in New Zealand? I think it was anti-lockdown. It was fucking hilarious. Even the newscaster was was a smarmy little twat about it because they, they kind of pushed past the barricade and the, the fucking cops were on the like the, the, the Capitol steps and the, the protesters yelled a bit and then they backed up and set the barricades back up. And she, she literally like smarmy little cunt that she was. She goes, and of course they set the barricades, barricades back up because this is New Zealand, not the U S we have manners after all. I mean, it was like, Oh, just twist that fucking knife. Yeah. It was some, some smarmy comment like that. I was like, yep. Yep. Um, all right, here's here's the one in Karina's town. Hey, woman. If they ask you for your papers, they have already forgotten. Not the right time, not the right place. Remember, it's day has more significance than all the ones we had since World War II. Yes. Cupcake. I still like the video that I saw going around. Let's see if there was any other. Okay, so that's the same clip, but we... This is not bullshit. This is not bullshit. This is exactly what our soldiers died for. Freedom. ...ask you how you felt when the um, anti-vax contingent seemed to kind of hijack the ceremony. I thought that every one of us that came here were violated today. It was... It was interrupted for this bullshit. And you don't need this kind of rhetoric going on or something like that. We had to remember the people that, that gave them that freedom, gave them the freedom that they're using, but they're abusing it. You I found that, that hurtful? I did. I did find it very hurtful. That's why I felt I had to go over and speak to them. The whole fucking the whole the whole day is goofy. The whole day is goofy. Sorry. Just got, I'm just gonna own that. I'm just gonna own that and fucking point out that the whole goddamn day is goofy. Um Um
So, I don't even worth mentioning. I, you know what? I'm not going to mention that headline. Um, <laughs> they got they they got vaccinated for our freedom. <laughs> uh Um, I wish I had, let's see, um, hold on, let me, let me try and find this fucking thing. Yeah, this thing. <laughs> um, I I don't. Coming soon, privatized air. Uh, basically, it's. You know, it's, it's a device to, uh, well, if you don't want to get fucking lung and throat cancer from the pollutants that they have no, um, Perrier for the win. Yeah. Uh, that they have no intention of stopping production of then. Yeah. Privatized water, privatized air, privatized housing, privatized fucking food, privatized fucking education, privatized healthcare, privatized, 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 privatized. And the fucking ANCAPs wonder why I hate them so much. Um... Let's see. Um, oh, um, another person died from the fucking bullshit Travis Scott crap. Uh, f facts. I don't even know where to fucking how to catch you up. I I have at length multiple times over months when he finally went full uh, main character syndrome and threw a hissy fit in my chat one night in the middle of DGen story time we had to remove him yes I'm I'm well versed in that person um So, yes. Um, with that, why don't we do the fucking next section of fucking, like, why ANCAPs aren't anarchists theory? How long is seven? We finished chapter six last night. Um, also, I thought about it after our conversation, after the discussion last night. I think I'm going to do... Um, I think I'm going to do a reading of what is property. For those of you who weren't here last night and don't understand this, this entire, this is, this is Proudhon's entire anthology. All right. This isn't what is property. What is property is like this fucking big maybe. Right. Um, I, I, I think, I think it's important that people hear what is property. Right. I, I think it, like given the context of 
because that was it was from a discussion involving Skeptic last night and what I considered to be like who, the more important books and texts and thinkers and philosophers and that sort of thing. Um, I, I I feel like I, I, I hemmed and hawed, but I think Proudhon is... No, Amherst, I'm not reading all of Proudhon. Um, I think Proudhon is more important than Kropotkin and Bakunin right now for foundational texts. And it, it, it kind of pained me to say it, right? But I, I think the concept of what is property is so fundamental to the discussion that we're having in a daily basis now. Intellectual property rights, privatized medicine, housing, water, air, right? Like, I think it's such a core concept to, to like, it, it is actually important to our daily conversations right now. And so, yeah, I, I was like, I, I think Proudhon is more important right now, at least. So, yeah, I think I'm going to do a reading of what is property. It, I may have to break it over two or three streams, but it's not that long. I mean, they can... <laughs> Versa, if they try and appropriate Proudhon, they can try, but holy shit, he would have hated them, right? He literally... What is property? Property is theft. These are his own words, right? Like, this, this is in the words of Pierre Joseph Proudhon, right? What, you know, what is property? Property is theft. So they can try and uh, appropriate him all they want, but at the end of the day, he's very difficult to appropriate from an ANCAP perspective because he, he is antithetical to their position. So... I mean, he kind of, I mean, he's one of the few, Amorous. He's one of the few. Most of the ones that they cite are hugely for property. I mean, they don't talk about anarchists. Fucking ANCAPs don't talk about anarchists. They don't. They talk about fucking Hoppe. They talk about fucking Hayek. They talk about fucking von Mises. They talk about fucking Rothbard. Right? They talk about Nozick. They talk about Ayn Rand even. Right? They don't talk about fucking, you know, Kropotkin or Bakunin or Proudhon or Goldman or fucking, you know, Bookchin or, I mean, you know, they, they don't, they're not in that camp. Right? Like the, the yeah, the closest, um, I mean, Amherst, yeah, they did. Yeah, they did. Fucking Kropotkin considered himself an anarcho-communist. Um, Proudhon coined the fucking term anarchist, for fuck's sake. Like, he's the daddy of fucking anarchism. Goldman was staunchly an anarchist, right? Like, Bakunin argued on behalf of anarchists to such an extent he got him kicked out of the fucking First International. Oh, uh, most of those, they never consider themselves anarchists. I mean, most of the ones you say they cite. Oh, no, no. None of the ones they cite are anarchists. They're all fucking Austrian economists and shit. Fucking ANCAPs never, like, talk about actual anarchists, right? And when they do, they cherry pick heavily, right? Like, that's, they, just, they can't get into anarchism because anarchism is opposed to their whole opposition. Hey, Rumble. <laughs> but you can't hurt their feelings. That'd be against the NAP. Um, fair enough facts and good to see you between Chomsky and Goldman I, 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 Emma's my favorite anarchist we were talking about that last night uh, yeah um, I mean there's yeah um, I mean she and I would have massive versus yes there's a lot of fucking nuance there but yeah. Um, yeah, she and I would disagree. We would fight like cats and dogs, facts, but I love Emma Goldman with all my heart. 
she was she was like hashtag bad bitch territory right like she did not play i love that woman um yeah she she's legitimately my favorite fucking anarchist um and caps are to anarchists what sock dims are to marxists sounds like um And caps are to anarchists as British are to Scottish. An invading force attempting to impose feudalism upon the practices and the free people of the land. There you go. That's that's if I had to if I had to do it. Yes. And caps are to anarchists as the British are to the Scottish. Hashtag free Scotland. Yes. <laughs> um. <laughs> quite. Uh, quite an example. Yeah, I, I, I think that that's sort of the appropriate take, right? 32 County Ireland. I went with the Scottish instead of the Irish just because I wanted to avoid the Republican connotation of uh, of the divided Ireland and that sort of shit, right? Like, I, I literally went for Scotland instead of Ireland just to avoid the troubles. Just to avoid the troubles. Um, but... Oh, yeah, um, facts. If you want to read Goldman, she's super easy to read. She doesn't get heavy into theory a lot of the times, and she's an essayist. It's probably why I love her to death, right? It speaks to my writer's soul. I'm an essayist as well. Um, it, it's she's she's an easy read compared com, compared to shit like this, right? This is Goldman is easy reading. She might yell at you a bit though. She gets a little yelly. <laughs> she's just. So some of some of what some of what Emma wrote is very much like what's your fucking deal? Why am I having to tell you this shit? Right? You can you can almost feel her like firebrand nature in her writing and it's that's why I love it. That's why I love her. Like I I I love her more than her her writing even. Right? Like I I don't I don't give a shit about her writing. I love Emma Goldman as a person. She was amazing. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Viva the Troubles they're inching their way back And you'll never guess who's instigating Bougie English colonists No Really? Who would have guessed Hey boy Boy Smitty Oh, Versa, my opinion on, on Zizek is that Zizek's going to lose his mind when Chomsky eventually dies. Because I, I firmly believe, like, my headcanon is that every one of Zizek's opinions and positions and ideological beliefs is based on, hang on, let me hear what Gnome has to say. All right, I disagree with that. I, I, I think Zizek legitimately enjoys trolling the fuck out of Chomsky. I think that that's where he gets most of his positions is just trolling the fuck out of Gnome. And so I think when Gnome does kick the bucket one of these years, dude, he's old as fuck, man. He's old as fuck. When he does kick the bucket, when he does die, um, Zizek's going to Zizek's gonna mourn. Zizek's going to mourn. He's going to miss him. Um. Yeah, I know. I wonder who Zizek will pick ne pick on next. I mean, they're not. I don't think they're friends, Viva. But I think that they're. I think they're acquaintances, and I think they're comfortable with each other. Um, 
I, I think they, despite their disagreements, I think they have a, 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 a like for each other. Yeah. He will still posthumously, uh, posthumously disagree with Chomsky. Yeah, he will. Um, Peter uh, Zizek did a fun one with Peterson. Peterson did horribly. I mean, I don't think Peterson has the tool belt. Like, he doesn't have the tools necessary to deal with somebody like Zizek. I, I'm, I'm not... Look, Peterson is... As long as he's in his lane of, like, psychoanalysis and psychology and the history of psychology, uh, Peterson is a formidable, a formidable opponent to have a, a debate or a conversation with, right? But once you stray outside that, is Zizek's going to run circles around Peterson, right? Like, that's... As long as Zizek can move him outside of psychoanalysis... It's guarantee win for him. He's 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 just gonna run circles around him. <clears throat> Karina, he's he's yeah, he's worth looking into, but I don't agree with a lot of what he says. <clears throat> no, no, I don't do cocaine. Um, <laughs> sure you don't. Sure you don't. Is Kissinger gonna live forever? Maybe. Uh, Zizek is the Louis C.K. of philosophy. It doesn't feel wrong. Upgraded now it's super coke. Um, <clears throat> Peterson's uneducated on Marxism and even Nietzschean philosophy. P Peterson's uneducated on a lot of stuff. Like I said, the instant he's outside of his realm of psychoanalysis and the history of psychoanalysis, um, he's completely lost. If you keep him in his fucking his lane, he's actually quite brilliant at it. Um, but he has a tendency to comment on things he knows absolutely nothing about. Um, and, well... Yeah. Zizek shows up as a lovable trash goblin intellectual. Peterson, clean your room! Um, I read the Communist Manifesto was his claim to authority on Marxism. I mean, it's better than a lot of Marxist beasticle. Shots fired. Shots fired. Shots fired. STV Philly, thank you for the follow. Um... <laughs> Um, all right, let's not go so far as to call Zizek a modern Diogenes, all right? Look, after he's dead and buried, we'll let the history books determine that one, all right? But that's... I. That's a step too far for me. Diogenes was a bad motherfucker who I have mad respect for. Um, I will see. We'll see. His, the history books will have their say on that one. I don't think we get to. Um, Slavic, thank you for the justification on that one. I, I, I felt I was... I was I was justified in that in those shots fired. Like I've I've met a lot of fucking Marxists that haven't read a whole lot of Marx, it seems like. Um so. <laughs> reading is obsolete. TikTok is the new philosophy medium. Oh god, help us all. Give them a barrel and see what happens. <laughs> I, that would actually be hilarious, right? To show up to a fucking lecture by Zizek with a barrel. Like a fucking wine cask. And be like. And just see how he reacts. Just see what he does with it. Just wheel that. Roll that fucker on the stage. Prop it up. And be like. It's a gift to you. See. Just see what happens. See if he rolls with it. See if he fucking gets the joke. See if. See, see what happens in that mind of Zizek. If you gave him a fucking barrel. In front of an audience. See what happened. Um, <laughs> cooks hot dog. <laughs> uh, humanity was a mistake. Um, 
hundred percent rolls with it. I, I I hope he did. I hope he would. I hope he'd fucking like. I I I you know I, look. I disagree with a whole lot of what Zizek says. I'm in the Chomsky camp as opposed to the Zizek camp. But like, I like the dude. I think the dude's great. Like, right? I don't, I don't, it's not like Peterson where I'm like, look, not only do I disagree with you, I dislike you as a human being too, right? Like I, I generally don't like what you've got going on over there, right? Um, Zizek, I would hang out with in a heartbeat. Like, are you kidding me? I'd fucking hang out with Zizek for as long as he wanted to hang out with. If Peterson invited me to hang out, I'm like, are you back on the benzos? Cause that's the only way I'm hanging out with you, bro. <laughs> I respect Zizek as a comedian, as a philosopher, not so much. Um, oh. Yeah, fucking Slovenian nut job that he is. Uh, only used the benzos to numb his pain. Eh, well, you know what? <laughs> I'd have to numb my pain. Um, <laughs> uh I mean, it, it would, it would, I was going to say, like, Astral, because he specializes in Marxism as well. Like, he's got theology, like, postmodernism, poststructuralism. He's got um, fucking, he's got a few things under his belt. Hang on. Like, it, I would, he's, he's a Hegelian. I know that. So, like, I, what, stating his politics would be difficult because he is a philosopher. Um Yeah, so he developed his own uh, non-traditional uh, Marxist theory uh, using uh, a more analyzed materialist conception of ideology that drew heavily on Lacanian uh, uh, psychoanalysis and Hegelian idealism. Yeah. Um, let's see. National service. Politics. There we go. Um, critical of Tito. Critical of militarization, member of the Communist Party of Slovenia until October of 88, quit in protest of a trial. He ran as a Liberal Democratic Party candidate. Uh, despite Liberal Democratic projects, he continues to identify himself as a communist, critical of right-wing circles, critical of nationalists, conservatives, and classical liberals in both Slovenia and worldwide. argues that neoliberalism just gives rise to neo-fascism anyway. So there you go. The hilarity of his, um, the, the hilarity of the, the of, um, Zizek is the Louis C.K. to my Chomsky Carlin. All right, I can live with that. Um, I forgot what I was about to say. Uh, either way. Oh, I know what I was going to say. The hilarity of it is um, all of the young Hegelians ended up basically like flipping the script on Hegel. Right? When you go back and study Hegel and you study the young Hegelians and you study the crew that came out of it, basically, they all sort of flip the script on um, Hegel itself, right? It's, it's a really weird, uh, like the ones who studied under Hegel generally like reverse or contradict or use like an inverted version of Hegelian dialectics. Whereas like as you move forward away from them, the ones who are inspired by the young Hegelians then use the like normalized version of Hegelian dialectics to an extent. It's a very weird historical pattern that has occurred. It's like the ones who talk to Hegel directly were like, yeah, I'm going to use a different version of this one. The ones who listened, like read the people who spoke to Hegel directly are like, oh, I'm going to use Hegel. It's, 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 it's a fascinating thing. Yeah. 
Um, it's like rebelling against your parents. Maybe so, Viva. Maybe so. Uh, it's funny seeing Westerners struggle with where to place Zizek. He basically just reflects Marxists who grew up in Yugoslavia. All right, fair enough. No one actually reads Hegel. That's the secret to reading Hegel. I should have known that. All right, Kaiser. Keep you around for the tricks and tri uh, tips and tricks. <clears throat> All right. Uh, where is my... There is my panel. Um... We're doing this. You know we're doing this. I'm going to get my I'm going to I'm going to get this fucking this goddamn thing done one way or another if it fucking kills me. Um, let's see. Kill off the alerts. Oh, uh, let's see. And raids. There we go. Now let's turn that off. Let's be real. Most Hegelians only read what other Hegelian philosophers wrote. <laughs> uh, I'm not surprised at that caboose at all. Um, yeah, fuck the end caps. Uh, with that being said, Chapter 7 is called How Does the History of a So-Called Anarcho-Capitalism Show That It's Not Anarchist? And then Section 1 is Are Competing Governments Anarchism? <laughs> These people are fucking stupid. Is Government Compatible with Anarchism is number 2. And Section 3 is Can There Be Right-Wing Anarchism? <laughs> the fact that I have to do this goddamn document at all. Still, still, one bemuses me and two annoys the ever loving fuck out of me. But, like I said, in the future, I will no longer discuss like ancapism. If somebody wants to argue about anarcho capitalism, they the the prerequisite is going to be listening to this entire fucking playlist, and I'm going to quiz them on it first. Right, like go listen to like the ten hours I have done on why ancaps are not anarchists. Then I will talk to you. Until then, nope. Um, the playlist is already up. Um, tech support. Um, we're we're we've uh, got up to chapter six done. When you're done, you should post to Anarcho Capitalist. <laughs> oh, qu quick ban, quick quick delete. They'll just fucking delete it. Um. Peter Meinhoff was Hegel's great-great-granddaughter's granddaughter. Wait, 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 wait. Fucking, yeah, Gun Gundren Enslin. Wait. Really? Uh... But yeah, co-founder of Peter uh, fucking... Holy shit. Yeah, like the, the fucking RAF. That's weird as fuck. I didn't know that. I had no idea, Rumble, that the co-founder of the fucking Bader Meinhof gang was fucking Hegel's great great granddaughter's granddaughter. Like that's a fucking weird thing. It's a fucking um, add a special are you listening keyword in this oh yeah shibboleth yeah we'll have to I will add a shibboleth you know what yeah I'll add a shibboleth like we're right in the middle of it right now basically I will add a shibboleth um yeah good idea Karina good idea Uh, 
Um, all right. Let's do this shit. I don't know how much we're going to get done. I don't know if we'll get section two. Section one's kind of long. We'll get seven done, <clears throat> and we'll go from there. All right. <sighs> Chapter 7. How does the history of so-called anarcho-capitalism show that it is not anarchist? Of course, so-called anarcho-capitalism does have historic precedents, and these so-called anarcho-capitalists themselves spend considerable time trying to co-opt various individuals into their self-proclaimed tradition of anti-statist liberalism. That, in itself, should be enough to show that anarchism and so-called anarcho-capitalism have little in common as anarchism developed in opposition to liberalism and its defense of capitalism. Unsurprisingly, these anti-state liberals tended to, at best, refuse to call themselves anarchists or, at worst, explicitly deny they were anarchists. One so-called anarcho-capitalist overview of their tradition is presented by David M. Hart. His perspective on anarchism is typical of the school, noting that in his essay, Anarchism or Anarchist, quote, are used in the sense of a political theory which advocates the maximum amount of individual liberty, a necessary condition of which it is, uh, is the elimination of governmental or, or other organized force. David M. Hart, Gustave de Molinere, and the Anti-Statist Liberal Tradition, Part 1, pages 263 to 290. Um, yet, anarchism has never been solely concerned with abolishing the state. Rather, anarchists have always raised economic and social demands and goals along with their opposition to the state. As such, anti-statism may be a necessary condition to be an anarchist, but not a sufficient one to count a specific individual or theory as an anarchist. And if you have listened to all of this, when we ask you for a shibboleth or a password, it's papaya. Specifically, anarchists have turned their analysis onto private property, noting that the hierarchical social relationships created by in, uh, inequity of wealth, for example, wage labor, restricts individual freedom. This means that if we do seek the maximum of individual liberty, then our analysis cannot be limited to just the state or government. Consequently, to limit anarchism, as Hart does, requires substantial rewriting of history, as can be seen from his account of William Godwin. Hart tries to co-opt uh, William Godwin into the ranks of anti-state liberalism, arguing that he defended individualism and the right to property. Page 265, he of course quotes from Godwin to support his claim, yet strangely truncates Godwin's argument to exclude his conclusion that... Quote, when the laws of morality shall be clearly understood, their excellence universally apprehended and themselves seen to be coincident with each man's private advantage, then the, uh, the idea of property in this sense will remain, but no man will have, have the least desire for purposes of ostentation or luxury to possess more than his neighbors. In our inquiry into political justice, page 199. In other words, personal property, possession, would still exist, but not private property in the sense of capital or inequality of wealth. This analysis is confirmed in Book 8 of Godwin's classic work entitled On Property. Needless to say, Hart fails to mention this analysis, unsurprising as it was later repri uh, reprinted as a socialist pamphlet. Godwin thought that the, quote, subject of property is the keystone that completes the fabric of political justice. Like Proudhon, Godwin sub uh, subjects property as well as the state to anarchist analysis. For Godwin, there were three degrees of property. The first is possession of things that you need to live. The second is, quote, the empire to which every man is entitled over the produce of his own industry. The third is, quote, that which occupies the most vigilant attention in the civilized states of Europe. It is a system in whatever manner established by which one man enters into the faculty of disposing of the produce of another man's industry. He notes that it is, quote, clear, therefore, that the third species of property is in direct contradiction to the second. Godwin 
unlike classical liberals, saw the need to, quote, point out the evils of accumulated property, arguing that the spirit of oppression, the spirit of servility, and the spirit of fraud are the immediate growth of the established administration of property. They are alike hostile to intellectual and moral improvement. Like the socialists he inspired, Godwin argued that it is to be considered that this injustice, the unequal distribution of property, the grasping and selfish spirit of individuals is to be regarded as one of the original sources of government and, as it rises in its excesses, is continually demanding and necessitating new injustice, new penalties, and new slavery. He stressed, let it never be forgotten that accumulated property is usurpation. Godwin argued against the current system of property and in favor of the justice of an equal distribution of the goods of life. This would be based on equality of conditions, or in other words, an equal admission to the means of improvement and pleasure, as this is law rigorously enjoined upon mankind by the voice of justice. Thus, his anarchist ideas were applied to private property, noting like subsequent anarchists that economic inequality resulted in the loss of liberty for the many, and consequently, in anarchist society would see a radical change in property and property rights. As Kropotkin noted, Godwin stated in 1793 in quite a definite, uh, definite form the political and economic principles of anarchism. Little wonder he, like so many others, argued that Godwin was the first theorizer of socialism without government, that is to say, of anarchism. For Kropotkin, anarchism was by definition not restricted to purely political issues, but also attacked economic hierarchy, inequality, and injustice. As Peter Marshall confirms, Godwin's economics, like his politics, are an extension of his ethics. Manning the Impossible, page 210. Godwin's theory of property is significant because it reflected what was to become standard 19th century socialist thought on the matter. In Britain, his ideas influenced Robert Owen and as a result the early socialist movement in that country. His analysis of property, as noted, predated Proudhon's classic anarchist analysis, as such to state as Hart did that Godwin simply concluded that the state was an evil which had to be reduced in power if not eliminated completely, while not noting his analysis of property gives a radically false presentation of his ideas. However, it does fit into his flawed assertion that anarchism is purely concerned with the state. Any evidence to the contrary is simply ignored. Again, bot doesn't respond, but I'm assuming it's clipping. Uh, ANCAP's arguing in bad faith? No. Uh. All right, how long is section one? Oof. I pushed it like a fucking half a dozen times. There it is. <clears throat> Clip requested. Now available at. Yeah. you too headphones oh oh, oh. shoulders popping crack crack All right, let's try and get this other section done because the next, let's see, it's Thursday. Today's Thursday, right? Yeah, Jesus. All right, so one is kind of long, two isn't that terrible, and three is, we, I know I said we weren't going to do anything on Friday, but I think we may be able to knock out chapter six and seven this week. 
which means might be able to do eight the next week. How long are these? 11 goes quicker. Maybe two weeks. Maybe two weeks. Might be able to get this done in two weeks. <clears throat> At the rate we're going. I mean, yeah, I guess. I hope I fail it. <laughs> Can I ask you a tanky purity test question? Yeah, go for it. God, I hope I fail. How much do you love Stalin from 9 to 12? Um, fucking, uh, was, isn't it closer to like 14, which is around the age he starts banging somebody? Um, if China and Taiwan go to war, should the U.S. intervene? Interesting. This is a tanky purity question. Um, how would... I mean, as an anarchist, I would go non-interventionist anyway. Um, but, like, I, I, it's the answer. The answer feels like I'm supposed to say no, but for all the wrong reasons, right? Like that's that's no, not because of non-interventionist or non-interaction on that sort of global stage. Um, but like, to be perfectly honest, it would be amusing. There's, there's an element of Carlin in my heart. I like chaos. Right? Like... I, I... The answer is if Tai... If the people of Taiwan ask us to. That's the answer. The answer is, do the people of Taiwan ask for assistance? Because their individual sovereignty, their so, uh, their sovereignty from China is what matters in that in that equation. And if they want it, then yes, we should. Oh, XL. All right. We were, I was fucking arriving at that conclusion sort of simultaneously, basically. Um, yeah. It's a matter of what the, the people of Taiwan want in that regard. It's not our business to step in, but if they want it, then yeah. Also, just also, while we're at it, just, just, just. Fuck the Chinese government there. You know, just fuck the Chinese government. Like, fuck the U.S. government too, right? But fuck the Chinese government. Um, hey, Puka. <clears throat> so. Um, yeah, if.
both Chinas lack the mandate from heaven. Um, Kaiser, I'm assuming that Korea has that heavenly mandate. Um, of course. Yes, of course. Of course. Of course. Uh, I mean, it's arguable that that ended up in disaster too, Astro. I mean, the, the fucking... It wasn't pretty. Yeah, I mean, it's... War is hell. Um... About to do some more theory reading. Um, and then, uh, but right now we're, somebody pro floated me a, a tanky purity test. <laughs> and initially I passed and then I guess I failed. No, hell is hell, war is war. Um, Oh, God. Uh, Viva and Slavic, I think, are going to have some fucking words based on that one. Either way, let me try and get this next section done. God, this one's long. I mean, it's not it's not 45 minutes long, but it's it's not. It's not short either. <laughs> Oh, that's a cop-out. That's a cop-out. I hate that. I hate that across the board. Agree to disagree. No. 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 You clearly, you, you, you fucking, come on. I want to see it. I want to see it. Um... Well, isn't that quite the philosophical question, Amorous? I know, right? All right. <sighs> Here we go. Chapter 7, Section 1. Are competing governments anarchism? <laughs> no, of course not. Yet, according to so-called anarcho-capitalism, it is. This can be seen from the ideas of Gustave de Molinari. Hart is on firmer ground when he argues that the 19th century French economist Molinari is a true founder of so-called anarcho-capitalism. With Molinari, he argues, the two different currents of anarchist thought converged. He combined the political anarchism of Burke and Godwin with the nascent economic anarchism of Adam Smith <laughs> and Say to create new forms of anarchism. That has been called anarcho-capitalism or free market capitalism. Of course, Godwin, like other anarchists, did not limit his anarchism to purely political issues, and so he discussed economic anarchism as well in his critique of private property, as Proudhon also did later. As such, to artificially split anarchism into political and economic spheres is both historically and logically flawed. While some dictionaries limit anarchism to opposition to the state, anarchists did and do not. The key problem for Hart is that Molinari refused to call himself an anarchist. He did not even oppose government. As Hart himself notes, Molinari proposed a system of insurance companies to provide defense of property and called these insurance companies governments, even though they did not have a monopoly within a given geographical area. And as Hart notes, Molinari was the sole defender of such free market justice at the time in France. Uh, Molinari was clear that he wanted a regime of free government counterpoising monopolistic or communist governments to free governments. This would lead to freedom of government rather than its abolition, not freedom from government. For Molinari, the future would not bring the suppression of the state, which is the dream of the anarchists. It will bring the diffusion of the state within society, that is, a free state in a free society. As such, Molinari can hardly be considered an anarchist, even if anarchist is limited to purely being against government. Moreover, in another sense, Molinari was in favor of the state, 
as we discussed in section uh, in chapter six, these companies would have a monopoly within a given geographical area. They have to in order to enforce the property owner's power over those who use but do not own the property in question. The key contradiction can be seen in Molinari's advocating of company towns, privately owned communities. His term was proprietary company. Instead of taxes, people would pay rent, and the administration of the community will either be left in the hands of the company itself or handled special organizations set up for this purpose. Within such a regime, those with the most property had proportionally the greater say in matters which affected the community. If the poor objected, then they could leave. Given this, the idea that Molinari was an anarchist in any form can be outright dismissed. His system was based on privatizing government, not abolishing it, as he himself admitted. This would be different from our current system, of course, as landlords and capitalists would be hiring, uh, hiring force directly to enforce their decisions rather than relying on a state which they control indirectly. His system, as we proved in Chapter 6, would not be anarchist as can be seen, can be seen from American history. There, capitalists and landlords created their own private police forces and armies, which regularly attacked and murdered union organizers and strikers. As an example, here is Henry Ford's service department private police force. Quote, In 1932, a hunger march of the unemployed was planned to march up to the gates of the Ford plant in Dearborn. The machine guns of the Dearborn police and the Ford Motor Company's service department killed four and wounded a score of others. Ford was fundamentally and entirely opposed to trade unions. The idea of working men questioning his prerogatives as an owner was outrageous. The River Rouge plant was dominated by the autocratic regime of Bennett's servicemen. Bennett organized and trained the 3,500 private policemen employed by Ford. His task was to maintain discipline amongst the workforce, protect Ford's property and power, and prevent unionization. Frank Murphy, the mayor of Detroit, claimed that, quote, Henry Ford employs some of the worst gangsters in our city. The claim was well-based. Ford's service department policed the gates of his plants, infiltrated emergent groups of union activists, posed his workers to spy on men on the line. Under this tyranny, the Ford, uh, the Ford worker had no security, no rights. So much so that any information about the state of things within the plant could only be freely obtained from ex-Ford workers. Hugh um, Bain on working for Ford, pages 29 to 30. The private police attacked women workers handing out pro-union handbills and gave them, quote, a severe beating. At Kansas and Dallas, similar beatings were handed out to the union men. This use of private police to control the workforce was not unique. General Motors spent $1 million on espionage and employing 14 detective agencies and 200 spies at one time between 1933 and 1936. The Pinkerton detected, uh, Detective Agency found anti-unionism its most lucrative activity. We must also note that the Pinkertons had been selling their private police services for decades before the 1930s. For over 60 years, the Pinkerton Detective Agency had been, quote, specializing in providing spies, agent provocateurs, and private armed forces for employers combating labor organizations. By 1892, it had provided services for management in 70 major labor disputes, and its 2,000 active agents and 30,000 reserves totaled more than the standing army of the nation. Jeremy Breacher, strike, page 55. With this force available, little wonder unions found it so hard to survive in the U.S. Only a so-called anarcho-capitalist would deny that this is a private government, employing private police to enforce private power. Given that unions could be considered as defense agencies for workers, this suggests a picture of how so-called anarcho-capitalism may work in practice, radically different from the pictures painted by its advocates. The reason is simple. It does not nor ignore inequality and subjects economics to an anarchist analysis. Little wonder, then, that Proudhon stressed that it, quote, becomes necessary for the workers to form themselves into democratic societies with equal conditions for all members on pain of a relapse into feudalism. Anarchism, in other words, would see capitalistic and proprietary exploitation stopped everywhere, the wage system abolished. And so the economic organization would replace the governmental and military system, the general idea of the revolution, pages 227 and 281. <coughs> 
clearly the idea that Proudhon shared with the sa- uh, shared the same political goal as Molinari is a joke. He would have dismissed such a system as a little more than an updated form of feudalism in which the property owner is sovereign and the worker's subjects. Unsurprisingly, Molinari, unlike the individualist anarchist, attacked the jury system, argued that it obliged people to perform the duties of judges. This is pure communism. People would judge according to the color of their opinions rather than according to justice. As the jury system uh, used amateurs, i.e. ordinary people, rather than full-time professionals, it could not be relied upon to defend the power and property rights of the rich. As was noted in Chapter 1, Section 4, Rothbard criticized the individualist anarchists for supporting juries for essentially the same reasons. But as is clear from Hart's accounts, Molinari had little concern that working class people should have a say in their own lives beyond consuming goods. His perspective can be seen from his lament about those (coughs) colonies where slavery had been abolished without the compulsory compulsory labor being replaced with an equivalent quantity of free labor, i.e. wage labor. There has occurred the opposite of what happens every day before our lives. Simple workers have been seen to exploit in their turn the industrial entrepreneurs, demanding from them wages which bear absolutely no relation to the legitimate share in the product which they ought to receive. The planters were unable to obtain for their sugar a sufficient price to cover the increase in wages and were obliged to furnish the extra amount at first out of their profits and then out of their very capital. A considerable number of planters have been ruined as a result. It is doubtless better that these accumulations of capital should be destroyed than the generations of men should perish. But would it not be better if both survived? So workers exploiting capital is the opposite of what happens every day before our eyes. In other words, it's normal that entrepreneurs exploit workers under capitalism. Similarly, this is a, what is legitimate share which workers ought to receive? Surely that is determined by the eternal laws of supply and demand and not what the capitalists, or Molinari in this instance, think is right, right? And those poor former slave drivers, they really do deserve our sympathy after all. What horrors they face from the imposition subjected upon them by their ex-chattels that they had to reduce their profits. How dare their ex-slaves refuse to obey them in return for what their ex-owners think was their legitimate share in the produce. How simple these workers are, not understanding the sacrifices their former masters suffer, nor appreciating how much more difficult it is for their ex-masters to create the product without the whip and the branding iron to aid them. As Marx so rightly comments, And what, if you please, is this legitimate share, which, according to Molinari's own admission, the capitalists in Europe daily neglects to pay? Over yonder in the colonies, where the workers are so simple as to exploit the capitalist, Molinari feels a powerful itch to use police methods to set on the right road the law of supply and demand, which works automatically everywhere else. An added difficulty in arguing that Molinari was an anarchist is that he was a contemporary of Proudhon, the first self-declared anarchist, and lived in a country with a vigorous anarchist movement. Surely, if he was really an anarchist, he would have proclaimed his kinship with Proudhon and joined in the wider movement. He did not, as Hart notes, as regards Proudhon. Their differences in economic theory were considerable, and it's probably for this reason that Molinari refused to call himself an anarchist in spite of their many similarities in political theory. Molinari refused to accept the socialist economic economic ideas of Proudhon, and in Molinari's mind, the term anarchist was intimately linked with the socialist and statist economic views. Yet Proudhon's economic views, like Godwin's, flowed from his anarchist analysis and principles. They cannot be arbitrarily separated as Hart suggests. So while arguing that Molinari was just as much as an anarchist as Proudhon, Hart forgets the key issue. Proudhon was aware that private property ensured that the proletarian did not exercise self-government during working hours, i.e. was not a self-governing individual. 
As for Hart claiming that Proudhon had statist economic views, it simply shows how far a so-called anarcho-capitalist perspective is from genuine anarchism. Proudhon's economic analysis, his critique of private property and capitalism flowed from his anarchism and was an integral aspect of it. To restrict anarchism purely to opposition to the state, Hart is impoverishing anarchist theory and denying its history. Given that anarchism was born from a critique of private property as well as the state, this shows the false nature of Hart's claim that, quote, Molinari was the first to develop a theory of free market pro, uh, proprietary anarchism that extended the laws of the market and a, rig a rigorous defense of property to its logical extreme. Hart shows how far from anarchism Molinari was as Proudhon had turned his anarchist analysis to property, showing that defense of property led to the opposition of the many and led to the oppression of the many by the few in social relationships identical to those which mark the state. Moreover, Proudhon argued that the state would always be required to defend such social relations. Privatizing it would hardly be a step forward. Unsurprisingly, Proudhon dismissed the idea that the laissez-faire capitalists shared his goals. Quote, the school of say, Proudhon argued, was the chief focus of counter-revolution next to the Jesuits and has for 10 years past seemed to exist only to protect and applaud the execrable work of the monopolists of money and necessities, deepening more and more the obscurity of a science naturally difficult and full of complications. Much can be, can, uh, the same can be said of so-called anarcho-capitalists, incidentally. For Proudhon, quote, the principles of Malthus and of Say, who oppose with all their might any intervention of the state in matters commercial or industrial, do not fail to avail themselves of this seemingly liberal attitude and to show themselves more revolutionary than the revolution. More than one honest searcher has been deceived thereby. However, this apparent anti-statist attitude of supporters of capitalism is false, as pure free market capitalism cannot solve the social question which arises because of capitalism itself. As such, it was impossible to abolish the state under capitalism. Thus, quote, this inaction of power in economic matters was the foundation of government. What need should we, uh, should we have of a political organization if power once permitted us to enjoy economic order? Instead of capitalism, Proudhon advocated the constitution of value, the organization of credit, the elimination of interest, the establishment of working men's associations, and the use of a just price. The idea of revolution, page 225, 226, and 233. Clearly then, the claims of Molinari was as an anarchist fail, as he, unlike his followers, were aware of what anarchism actually stood for. Hart, in his own way, actually acknowledges this. Quote, in spite of his protestations to the contrary, Molinari should be considered an anarchist thinker. His attack on the state's monopoly of defense must surely warrant the description of anarchism. His reluctance to accept this label stemmed from the fact that the socialists had used it first to describe a form of non-statist society which Molinari definitely opposed. Like many original thinkers, eh, Molinari had to use the concepts developed by others to describe his theories. In his case, he had come to the same political conclusions as the communist anarchists, mm, although he had been working within the liberal tradition. And it's therefore not surprising that the terms used by the two schools were not compatible. It would not be until the latter half of the 20th century that radical free, li free trade liberals would use the word anarchist to describe their beliefs. It should be noted that Proudhon was not a communist anarchist, but the point remains. The aims of anarchism were recognized by Molinari as being inconsistent with his ideology. Consequently, he rightly refused the, rape of the label. If only his self-proclaimed followers in the latter half of the 20th century did the same, anarchists would not have to bother with them, maybe even today. As such, it seems ironic that the founder of so-called anarcho-capitalism should have come to the same uh, should uh, have come to the same conclusion as modern-day anarchists on the subject of whether his ideas are a form of anarchism or not. Um, how far is seven two seven three? Uh, how y'all doing?
Y'all doing okay? Can I keep going? I My voice feels like I can keep going. Uh, Mike from Seattle, thanks for the follow. It was a while ago, though. It feels like I got another section or two in me. If I can get through 7-2 and 7-3 tonight... That means we're done with Chapter 7 tonight. That would put us ahead of the game. That would put us ahead of the fucking game. <clears throat> I don't know if I'll be able to. 7-2 is a bit of a slog. Um, Y'all had your uh, fucking Kosovo argument, I see. Just looking, looking at some what, what was going on over here. Right there, right, right, right there. Oh, right, right there, right there, and right there. Sore right now. Um, <laughs> fair enough. Um, uh, Fucking and caps, yo. <laughs> uh. Oh, well, a lot. Of, I hate that kind of thing. Oh. You just you're like, oh fuck me. Um, especially when you like come up with the perfect argument later. That one, that one always drives me insane. It's like, God damn it, that's what I should have said. Oh, man, that's like four pages, maybe. Oh, God, are we going to talk about Rand? Is this one Rand? Is this, is this, we're going into Herbert and Rand, aren't we? Oh, yeah, we're going into Oberon, Herbert, Herbert. I'm pretty sure it's Herbert, but... Let me let me check a pronunciation on this fucking name. The word idealist these days is rarely how the world imagine or politics. Instead, they would describe as his political flaw. If Auburn Herbert was anything, it was. No, we're going with Herbert. <laughs> Fair enough. Could have sworn it was there bad, but whatever. Um. Uh, so this is gonna be this is gonna be fucking Herbert and uh sleep well, Karina. I'm seeing yeah, I'm seeing Herbert and Rand here. Fucking oh god. Okay, so yeah, we're in the volunteerists. Yep, or uh, voluntarists. Oh, I would. Um. Yeah, before I fucking read Ayn Rand, especially on air, right? Like, no, I'm good. I'm good, homie. I'm good. Yeah. Um, like that, that shit ain't happening. Uh, let's see. Hang on. Let me get make echoes open though. I mean, this is, this is okay. So this is going to be, um, I feel Ayn Rand is essentially akin to like Lincoln Park. Right. When you learn that like a bunch of those boys from Lincoln Park were basically like upper middle class Cali, right? Like fucking and you, you hear about some of the like the teen angsty fucking woe is me, daddy didn't buy me a fucking five series beamer instead of a three series beamer lyrics that they wrote. I've, I I I it's sort of it's in that same camp. It's in that same camp. It's like, I'm sorry, bitch. Like, what are you whining about? No, don't break the illusion. Yeah. Sorry. 
Sorry. Look, I enjoyed them just as much as the next fucking angsty white boy in the late 90s and early 2000s, right? Like, I was in high school during that time when they broke out. I get it. I get it. But let's not lie to ourselves. <laughs> you know. Um, and, I mean, Chester really did end up suffering from clinical depression in the end. So, uh, you know. I, it just whiny white boy music. It's in that camp. It just reminds me of that shit. It's fucking, what are you complaining about? It's not like you're fine. All of these brilliant innovators who have to put up with this whiny labor force. It's like, what are you fucking complaining about? You ain't making shit, bitch. Um, like fucking Ayn Rand fucking literally out there bitching about all of the brilliant innovators who are being taken advantage of by all of these proletarian masses. It's like, bitch, what are you creating? You you ain't you ain't made shit. What who why who what you think you're one of them? Right? Like she ain't one of them. She ain't making crap. So Oh, I know. Right, Carpe? Um, creating a drain on the welfare system. I mean, yeah. She she died on Social Security and welfare. Yeah. Um, fucking Ayn Rand. Fucking. That's, it just, it's, it's just, it sparks the same feeling in me. Right? Like, that it just sparks the same feeling. It's just like, what the fuck are you complaining about? <laughs> right? Like, all of the brilliant industrialists. You ain't one of them. Shut up. Why are you fucking simping for them? Right? It's just, for some reason, it kicks off the same neurons in my head. She was. She was a terrible human being. She's a terrible human being. I don't think she was as bad as fucking um, a few, right? But... She was, she was not great. She was not great. Um, USSR gave that woman a free ass education too. Hey, yeah. Yeah, that's fair. A lot of, um, all right. So we're going, dude, dude, this is a hell of a chapter. Or a hell of a section. Um, she was the theorist. Mother Teresa was the praxis side. Oof. Fucking just, just nega versions, right? Like, there's just, it's just the fucking shadow versions, right? If we're playing the fucking video games, right? This is just the fucking, the negative versions of things. Oh, God. Ugh. You're right, though. Kind of. Oh. I, I don't even want to admit you're... You're you're right, fucking Carpe. Like it's just oh, <laughs> fucking. Well, let me swallow the bile. Fucking Mother Teresa, kick that fucking rotted corpse in the fucking side. Um, are we over her as a society yet? Have we like turned the corner on her? Is this like a a Columbus issue? At this point, like, have we, oh, she wasn't a masochist. She was a sadist. She didn't believe in suffering whatsoever. She didn't suffer when it came time. She fucking, as she availed herself of the best, she didn't suffer for shit. No, she was a sadist. Yeah. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. She believed in suffering for others. Yes. Yeah, she was she was a sadist, not a masochist. Yeah, she ain't she ain't in on that shit. She's like, hmm, no, that's for the poor people. <laughs> um All right, so mixed feelings. Seems like it maybe the tide may be turning on Mother Teresa a little bit, hopefully. Fuck that cunt. 
Um, Gandhi, we're still ambivalent. I fucking... Yeah, Gandhi was not good people. <laughs> he was not good people. Um, I have, um, like, in Rules for Radicals and another another book, um, I forget which other book. I think it may have been the Samuel Adams is a propagandist book. They talked about it as well. Um, yeah, Gandhi was fucking creepy, fucking misogynistic. Um, he, he openly talked about, um, how like the only reason he used nonviolence is because the, uh, Indian man had been emasculated by the British empire and that if he had a grenade, he would throw it. Right. Like, I mean, he was not nonviolent because some higher ethical principle, he was nonviolent because the British had fucking kneecapped the uh, Indian, uh, the Indian subcontinent. If he had a fucking rifle, he would have picked it up and shot a motherfucker in the face. He did not believe in nonviolence as some sort of ethical high water mark that could be achieved. He was fucking, he was in on it. He's like, yeah, this is all we have. All right. Um, why do people simp for Gandhi then? Like even in school textbooks? I don't fucking know. Maybe it's, it's the, Hey, crusty. It's the, um, when the leg, when the legend becomes truth, print the legend. Right? Like, it's it's that sort of shit. Yeah. Like, it's... People need heroes to fucking worship, and they need structures to build... Uh, they need heroes to build these structures upon. And so they need these mythological entities. <sighs> All right. How long is seven two? One, two, three, four. Jesus Christ. Let's try it. <laughs> yeah, Amaris. Um, Fucking, he never even set foot on North America. Fucking dummy story. Um, uh, there is a good Churchill though. It's not Winston. Mad Jack Churchill. Um, the guy's batshit insane. He's, he's not a good person, but he's, his story is hilariously just crazy as fuck. Oh, Claymore guy. Yes, bagpipes and Claymore guy. The guy was fucking batshit insane. It was just, oh, if it wasn't for those damn Yanks, we could have kept the war going for another 10 years. Yep, the guy was, the guy's a fucking story. The guy's a fucking story. Yeah. Um. I, I, yeah, Mad Jack Churchill. He's, he's, you know, way more interesting to someone like me than fucking Winston Churchill could ever be. Guy was crazy as shit. Um, all right. I love that you immediately knew who I was talking about too, Che. I love I love to see who who knows about these sorts of like weirdo figures. Um good old Mad Jack. <clears throat> All right. It's gonna be a little bit of a stretch here. It's maybe four pages. Um see I dis I kinda disagree with the summation of this section. Because we've come to define these terms differently than how this is defined now, uh, like then. But I 
I'm just thinking if I want to uh, like ad hoc modify any of this. See, this is this is problematic for me as a section. I'm thinking about cutting the entire fucking section tech support. Oh, no, he's batshit insane. Yeah, if you're reading through Mad Jack Churchill's w fucking wiki, he's, dude, he's crazy as fuck, man. Good on you for reading it, though. <sighs> I think I could swing this just by changing this first line. How am I going to rewrite this? Uh, well, Lada, se chapter seven, section two, is government compatible with anarchism? Of course not. But ironically, this is the conclusion arrived at by Hart's anal uh, uh, analysis of the British voluntarists, particularly Aubert Her uh, Herbert. Voluntarism was a fringe part of the right-wing individualist movement inspired by Herbert Spencer, a spokesman for free market capitalism, blah, 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 right? Is government compatible with anarchism? Of course not. Well, we've come to define government differently than when a lot of the classical anarchist literature was written. And so while government was once intrinsically tied to the state, a broader definitional set now is uh, associated with like um, a system, a group of people governing an organized community sort of situation, right? So the, the definitional set for, for government has sort of shifted and migrated and trended away from being s intrinsically tied to the state at a fundamental level, right? They can be separated now. Once upon a time, they couldn't really be parsed. And now they kind of can be. And so... There's a more nuanced argument to talk about that the, 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 the state of governance for the people could be a hierarchical uh, style of governance. And while you eliminate government big G uh, and, you know, the state that is intrinsically tied to it, you could keep governance, which is just the style of operation that the people engage in. And so I'm, I'm hesitant with that line because I, I've, I've also argued against that point. Like, you know, are we against government? No. Right? Like, are you talking big G sort of thing? Um, the only issue here, Wolata, would be that, like, I do reference the document in all of the uploads. And so there would be a distinction made. And I just have to, I guess I would have to annotate I guess I just have to add an addendum to the, the, the upload on this one that I've made some modifications. Um, yeah, see, this is, this is uh, Slavic. I, I, yeah, like I, 
we the eh, all right. So how am I going to do this? <sighs> All right, give me give me one sec here. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to read the document as it stands and then i i think i may preface it with that that counter argument yeah exactly slavic like there is a distinction to be made now between big g government and government right and a political science would a political scientist would would you know anybody who with a degree of nuance to their conversation would would recognize that distinction these days and so i think i'm going to preface it with that counter argument and then i will read the document as it stands just to leave the intact nature of the document for anybody who wants to read the document on their own and then i yeah i think i will preface this segment with my own statement I think it's the way to go rather than ad hoc change the document on the fly, which I think would be sort of bad faith because I have been referencing people to the document through every like description and that sort of thing. So yeah, I think that's the way I'm going to go because <clears throat> I do disagree like wholeheartedly with that. Of course not. But the rest of the section I'm kind of okay with. Yeah, they even make the distinction later on that the state should protect Lockean property rights and this sort of shit, right? Like they... I don't know. The, the entire section feels problematic to me. All right, I'm going to preface it with that argument, and I might fucking leave it in the can. I don't know. We'll see. All right, let's get this fucking show on the road. <clears throat> Chapter 7, Section 2, is government compatible with anarchism? Now, I'd like to add a personal note at the beginning of this section. There has come to be a, a distinction, a nuance within the anarchist milieu and within uh, political science as within the current space of discussion um, since when this document was originally written. The document originally states that, of course not, government is not compatible with anarchism, but we've arrived at a different definitional set for anarchism as uh, for a government as it has come today. There is sort of big G government that is intrinsically tied with the state that is the sort of status of of course not. But when talking about the sort of operating modalities and how a people uh, align themselves and organize themselves, this is sort of like small g government. And the sort of governing mentalities and the go governing mo uh, methodologies that people have um, and how they organize their society. And so this sort of becomes a sticking point and an arguing point depending on the spaces you're engaging in. And so I just want to preface this with this is sort of a big G government um, slash state usage of government in this section. With that being said, here is the section. Chapter 7, Section 2. Is government compatible with anarchism? Of course not. But ironically, this is the conclusion arrived at by Hart's analysis of the British voluntarists. 
particularly Aubert Her Her uh, Herbert. Voluntarism was a fringe part of the right-wing individualist movement inspired by Herbert Spencer, a spokesman for free market capitalism in the later half of the 19th century. As with Molinari, there's a problem with presenting this ideology as anarchist, namely that, that it's leading light. Herbert re explicitly rejected the label anarchist. Herbert was clearly aware of individualist anarchism and distanced himself from it. He argued that such a system would be pandemonium, he thought that people should not direct our attacks as the anarchists do against all government, against government in itself, but only against the overgrown, the exaggerated, the insolent, unreasonable, and indefensible forms of government, which are found everywhere today. Capital G, big government, should be strictly limited to its legitimate duties in defense of self-ownership and individual rights. He stressed that we are governmentalists, formally constituted by the nation, employing in this matter of force the majority method. Moreover, Herbert knew of and in, in rejected individualist anarchism, considering it to be founded on a fatal mistake. As such, claims that he was an anarchist or so-called anarcho-capitalist cannot be justified. Hart is aware of this slight problem, quoting Herbert's claim that he aimed for regularly constituted government generally accepted by all citizens for the prote protection of the individual. Like Molinari, Herbert was aware that anarchism was a form of socialism and that the political aims could not be artificially separated from its economic and social aims. Again, I'd like to add an addendum here and make a distinction. Though anarchism has a historic tie to socialism, there are other forms of anarchist analysis and methodologies, and anarchism has come to have a wide set of tools in its tool, tool belt that can align and modify a whole host of styles of economic and political systems. So while it does have a historical tie to socialism, it does have ties to syndicalism. It does have ties, unfortunately, to things like primitivism. It does have ties to communism. It does have ties to other things. And anarchism unto itself has come to sort of reference this lens of analysis and this methodology that you can approach a problem with. Uh, with that said, back to the document. As such, he was right not to call his ideas anarchism as it would result in confusion, particularly as anarchism was a much larger movement than his. As Hart acknowledges, Herbert faced the same problems that Molinari had with labeling his philosophy. Like Molinari, he rejected the term anarchism, which he associated with the socialism of Proudhon and terrorism. While quite tolerant of individualist anarchism, he thought they were mistaken in their rejections of government. However, Hart knows better than Herbert about his own ideas, arguing that his ideology is in fact a new form of anarchism, since the most important aspects of the modern state, the monopoly of the use of force in a given area, is rejected in no uncertain terms by both men. He does mention that Benjamin Tucker called Herbert a true anarchist in everything but name, but Tucker denied that Kropokin was an anarchist, suggesting that he was hardly a reliable guide. As it stands, it seems that Tucker was mistaken in his evaluation of Herbert's politics. Economically, Herbert was not an anarchist, arguing that the state should protect Lockean property rights. Of course, Hart may argue that these economic differences are not relevant to the issue of Herbert's anarchism, but that is simply to repeat the claim that anarchism is simply concerned with government, a claim which is hard to support. This position cannot be maintained given that both Herbert and Molinari defended the right of capitalists and landlords to force their employees and tenants to follow their orders. Their governments existed to defend the capitalists from rebellious workers, to, prevent, uh, to break unions, to uh, break strikes and occupations. In other words, they were a monopoly of the use of force in a given area to enforce monopoly power in a given area, namely the wishes of the property owner. While they may have argued that this was defense of liberty, in reality, it's the defense of power and authority. What about if we just look at the political aspects of his ideas? Did Herbert actually advocate anarchism? Far from it. He clearly demanded a minimal state based on voluntary taxation. The state would not use any force of any kind except for purposes of restraining force. He argued that in his system, while the state should compel no services and exact no payments by force, it should be free to conduct many useful undertakings in competition with all voluntary agencies, independence on voluntary payments. 
As such, the state would remain, and unless he is using the term state in some highly unusual way, it's clearly that it's clear that he means a system where individuals live under a single elected government as their common lawmaker, judge, and defender within a given territory. This becomes clearer once we look at how the state would be organized. In his essay, A Politician in Sight of Haven, Herbert does discuss the franchise, stating it would be limited to those who paid a voluntary income tax. Anyone paying it would have the right to vote. Those who did not pay it, as is just, without the franchise. There would be no other tax. The law would be strictly limited, of course, and the government must confine itself simply to the defense of life and property, whether as regards internal or external defense. In other words, Herbert, Herbert was a minimal statist, with his government elected by a majority of those who chose to pay their income tax and funded by that, and by any other voluntary taxes they decide to pay. Whether individuals and companies could hire their own private police in such a regime is irrelevant in determining whether it's anarchy. This can be best by seen, uh, this can best be seen by comparing Herbert with Ayn Rand. No one would ever claim Rand was an anarchist. I hope no one would ever claim Ayn Rand is an anarchist. Yet, her ideas were extremely similar to Herbert's. Like Herbert, Rand supported laissez-faire capitalism and was against the initiation of force. Like Herbert, she extended the principle to favor a government funded by voluntary means, government financing in a free society, the virtue of selfish, uh, selfishness, page 116 to uh, 120. Moreover, like Herbert, she explicitly denied being an anarchist and again, like Herbert, thought the idea of competing self uh, defense agencies would result in chaos. The similarities with Herbert are clear, yet no so-called anarcho-capitalist would claim that Rand was an anarchist, yet they do claim Herbert was. This position is, of course, deeply illogical and flows from the non-anarchist nature of so-called anarcho-capitalism. Perhaps unsurprisingly, when Rothbard discusses the idea of the voluntarists, he fails to address the key issue of who determines the laws being enforced in society. For Rothbard, the key issue is who is enforcing the law, not where that law comes from, as long as, of course, it's a law code he approved of. The implications of this is significant, as it implies that anarchism need not be opposed to either state nor government. This can be clearly seen from Rothbard's analysis of voluntary taxation. Rothbard correctly notes that Herbert advocated voluntary taxation as a means of funding a state whose basic role was to enforce Lockean property rights. For Rothbard, the key issue was not who determines the law, but who enforces it. For Rothbard, it should be privatized police and courts, and he suggests that the voluntary taxation, uh, taxationists have never attempted to answer this problem. They have rather stubbornly assumed that one would set up a competing defense agency within a state's territorial limits. If the state did bar such firms, then that state is not a genuine free market. However, if the government did permit free competition in defense service, there would soon no longer be a central government over the territory. Defense agencies, po police, and judicial would compete with one another in the same uncoerced manner as the producers of any other service on the market. Power and Market, page 122 and 123. However, this misses the point totally. The key issue that Rothbard ignores is who determines the laws which these private defense agencies would enforce. If the laws are determined by a central government, the state, then the fact that citizens can hire private police and attend private courts does not stop the regime being statist. We can safely assume Rand, for example, would have no problem with companies providing private security guards or the hiring of private detectives within the context of her minimal state. Ironically, Rothbard stresses the need for such a monopoly legal system. Quote, while the government would cease to exist, the same cannot be said for a constitution or a rule of law, which in fact would take on in the free society a far more important function than at present. For the freely competing judicial agencies would have been guided by a body of absolute law to enable them to distinguish objectively between defense and invasion. This law embodying elaborations upon the basic injunction to defend person and property from acts of invasion would be codified in the basic legal code. Failure to establish such a code of law would tend to break down the free market, for the defense against invasion could not be adequately achieved. So, if you violate the absolute law, defending absolute property rights, then you'd be in trouble. 
The problem now lies in determining who sets that law. Rothbard is silent on how his system of monopoly laws are determined or specified. The voluntarists did propose a solution, namely a central government elected by the majority of those who voluntarily decide to pay an income tax, aka a state. In other words, in the words of Herbert, quote, We agree that there must be a central agency to deal with crime, an agency that defends the liberty of all men and employs force against the use of force. But my central agency rests upon voluntary support, while whilst Mr. Levy's central agency rests on compulsory support. All and all Rothbard is concerned over private cops would exist or not. This lack of concern over the existence of the state and the big G government flows from the strange fact that so-called anarcho-capitalists commonly use the term anarchism to refer to any philosophy that opposes forms of initiary coercion. Notice that government or state does not play in this definition. Thus, Rothbard can analyze Herbert's politics without commenting on who determines the law his private defense agencies enforce. For Rothbard, an anarchist society is defined as one where there's no legal possibility for coercive aggression against the person and property of any individual. He then moved on to the state, defining that as an institution which possesses one or both, almost always both, of the following properties. One, it acquires its income by physical coercion, known as taxation, and two, it acquires and usually obtains a coerced monopoly of the provision of defense services, police and courts, over a given territorial area. This is a highly unusual definition of anarchism. Given that it utterly fails to mention or define government, uh, define government, it doesn't talk about really any of the hierarchical power structures. It does nothing to address the inequality and inequity that normal anarchists or anarchists talk about. And this perhaps is understandable as any attempt to define it in terms of monopoly of decision-making power results in showing that capitalism is statist. See chapter one for a summary on this. The key issue here is the term legal possibility. That suggests a system of laws which determine what is coercive aggression and what constitutes what is and what is not legitimate property. Herbert is considered by so-called anarcho-capitalists as one of them, which brings us to a strange conclusion that for so-called anarcho-capitalists, you can have a system of anarchism in which there is a government and state as long as the state does not impose taxation or stop private police forces from operating. As Rothbard actually argues, if a government based on voluntary taxation permits free competition, the result will be a purely free market system. The previous government would now simply be one competing defense agency among many on the market. Power and Market, page 124. That the government, the state, is specifying what is and what is not legal does not seem to bother him or even cross his mind, apparently. Why should it, when the existence of government is irrelevant to his definition of anarchism and the state? The private police force are enforcing a monopoly law determined by the state seems hardly, uh, hardly a step in the right direction, nor can it be considered as anarchism. Perhaps this is unsurprising, for under his system, there would be, quote, a basic common law code, which all would have to abide by, as well as, quote, some way of resolving disputes that will gain a majority consensus in society, whose decision will be accepted by the great majority of the public. Society without a state, page 205. At least, Herbert is clear that this would be a governmental system, a state. Unlike Rothbard, who assumes a monopoly law, but seems to think that this is not a government or, nor a state. As David Weick argued, this is illogical, for according to Rothbard, quote, all would have to conform to the same legal code, and this can be only achieved by a means of forceful action of adherence to the code against those who flout it. And so in his system, there would stand over, every, again, there would stand over against every individual the legal authority of all the others. An individual who did not recognize private property as legitimate would surely perceive this as tyranny of law, a tyranny of the majority or at least the most powerful. In short, almost a hydra-headed state. If the law code is itself unitary, then this multiple state might be said to have properly a single head, the law. 
but it looks as though one might still call this a state under Rothbard's definition by satisfying de facto one of his pair of sufficient conditions. It asserts and usually obtains a coerced monopoly of provision of defense service, police and courts, over a given territorial, territorial area. Hobbes's individual sovereign would seem to have become many sovereigns, but with but one law. However, and in truth, therefore a single sovereign in Hobbes's most important sense of the latter term, one might better and less confusingly call this a libertarian state rather than anarchy. The obvious recipients of the coercion of the new state would be those who rejected the authority of their bosses and landlords. Those who reject the locking and property rights Rothbard and Herbert hold so dear. In such cases, the rebels and any defense agency, like, say, a union, which defended them, would be driven out of business as it violated the law of the land. How this is different from a state banning competing agencies is hard to determine. This is a difficulty, argues Wyke, which results from the attachment of a principle of private property and of unrestricted accumulation of wealth to the principle of individual liberty. This increases sharply the possibility that many reasonable people who respect their fellow men and women will find themselves outside the law because of dissent from a property interpretation of liberty, end quote. Similarly, there is an economic re- uh, similarly, this is the economic result of capitalism. One can imagine, White continues, that those who lose out badly in the free competition of Rothbard's economic system, perhaps a considerable number, might regard the legal authority as an alien power, state for them based on violence, which and might be quite unmoved by the fact that just as under the 19th century capitalism, a principle of liberty was the justification for it all. Um... Oh, it's it's Slavic. It's it's almost like an Ouroboros fucking they literally it's it's a state with extra steps. And and Kapistan is is literally just a state with extra steps. It's it's not even a state with extra steps, it's multiple states with extra steps. Right? It's like, hey, we have this like monolithic problem in our society. You know what would be great is if we copy and pasted it a bunch of times and then put Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk in charge of a bunch of them. That's that's the solution, right? That'll fix everything. It's like, how dumb are you? <laughs> thank you, Rad. Yeah, it, it's... Thank you, Rad. <laughs> Let's make multiple problems out of one. It, it's it's it is legitimately one of the dumbest fucking ideologies I've ever come across. And the fact that they call themselves anarchists is the only reason I would not address this. I would not address this nonsense if it wasn't for the fact that they try and invade anarchist spaces. They operate in bad faith and they try and invade fucking anarchist spaces. And as a result, we have to fucking fend these idiots off. Otherwise, I'd be like, whatever. Fucking they're batshit insane. Let them, let them do their own thing. They're fucking self-defeating. But they'll take us down with it, right? Like people will go into spaces and they'll be like, oh, no, no, we're totally anarchists. And then they'll be talking to them. And then the, that person will walk away and think anarchists are pro-capitalism, anarchists are pro-state, anarchists are pro-hierarchy, right? Like they do damage to anarchists. This is the only fucking reason I'm doing this. <clears throat> In that sense, they're closer to neolibs than anarchists. No, they really are. Slavic, they, they 100% are. They, they 100% are. Um, that's a, that's a name. Um, it's an interesting conceptualization of distributing state power among all individuals. They decentralize the state by making many mini states. Yep. Well, I mean, they make a bunch of, they make a bunch of companies. All it is, is, um, if, if you are going to sort of like rebrand these people, they're private statists. That's it. Like you could probably do like private minarchists. Um, but like, that's, that's all they're for. They're just, how bad is this invasion currently? Um, it's worse than it's ever been. It's worse than it's ever been. It's not the, it's not 
like, holy shit, holy shit, holy shit, holy shit. But it is, this is, there are more of them than there have ever been. Yeah. Um, tons of fucking tech bros, um, tons of fucking like crypto bros that normally we'd point as like right libertarian or North American libertarian, not classical libertarian, but basically like fiscal conservatives who, um, want a a minimization or elimination of the state anti-statist fiscal conservatives. Right. That now identifies anarchists because the only qualifier for them for anarchists to be an anarchist is to be government bad. Right. Like get the government out of my pocket. Stop taxing me. And this is anarchism for them. Right. And it's like there's there's more of these idiots now than there ever have been They're Luckily, they're not putting out new theory. They're just a bunch of parrots. Um. So, um, I, 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 but yeah, it's gotten to the point where I'm having to read actual like, um, anti ANCAP theory and that sort of shit. Right. It's, it's an issue. It's an issue. Yeah. Um, hey dad. Yeah. It's, it's, it's worse than it's ever been. Uh, what did I think? Oh God, I can't even say that. That's the Azerbaijan Turkey thing, right? What did I think of the Nagorno Kabarak war of 2020? I I don't have any thoughts on that one. Sorry. That's the, the best I can do is that's like Azerbaijan and Turkey's conflict, right? The fact that I know what it is, is probably the most you're going to get out of American who doesn't specialize in the region. Um, uh, so functionally they'd be setting up some corporatist hellhole where nation state entities are replaced by corporate entities. Um, yes. Um, we, there's, there's chapters on that. We've already done sections on that. Yeah. Um, they would set up company towns. Yeah. hundred percent. They're already trying to do it. You look at like Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos and they're talking about like Amazon town and shit like that. Um, yeah, it's Armenians in Azerbaijan. Okay. Yeah. Armenians and Azers back at it again. This guy's are, um, <laughs> nice dude. I love feudalism. Um, it's, it's why they're the bot. Like you see, it's fucking neo-feudalism. Yeah. That's, that's, that's all they are. They're fucking neo-feudalists. They, they all think that they'll, they will be the Lord and the manor on the hill. They're all temporarily embarrassed millionaires. And at the end of the day, that's what will, you know, uh, what will be put up. Uh, that was an interesting, um, Auto-correct. I am not a Demsock. I am an anarchist. Um, that is kind of the whole point. Although it's not in the stream title right now. Um, I, I actually took that away. Um, for those of you like the long timers, um, yeah, I, I took out the anarchist stream portion of the title and I've been leaving it out the last few days and I'm going to see where that goes and whether there's a knock on effect of that. But yeah, um, I am not, a am I'm, I'm an anarchist, right? That that's, I've got opinions and views and fucking dem sock. I ain't one of them, <clears throat> but Hey, like neoliberal capitalism has got to fucking go. So you know, I can, I can compromise. I can work with groups. I can do things, but yeah, the neolib capitalism is killing us. Um, all right. What is, what is the length on the last section? (laughs) The last section is literally called, can there be right-wing anarchism?
Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Just no. <laughs> um, I mean, there's only so much room in there, right, Slavic? There's only so much room, right? I mean... <clears throat> Like I look, how am I gonna sp how am I gonna know about fucking I'm sorry, like you know, the nuance and stuff. I've spent dude, I spent fifteen years in the trenches and then ten years studying anarchist theory, right? right? There's on top of being an IT professional, on top of being a like a rock climber and rappelling and skydiving and whitewater rafting and racing and shit like that, right? Like homie had a full plate. Right. Like there's only so much I can only know about so many conflicts and so many like the fact that I know like about the, the like the uh, the Dutch Christian party and the fact that I'm aware of the political alignments of like German football teams and that I'm I'm up to date on UK politics. Right. Like are you like are you aware of like the Ohio senatorial race in America? Right. Like we're a continent. You remember that. Right. Like just keeping up with American politics is a fucking thing, right? Like, geopolitics matters. It matters. Don't get me wrong. I'm not downplaying it, but homie, like, it's, it's, dude, it's a big fucking task. Uh, yeah, fucking prims can go fuck themselves. Viva. I have guys for that. Um, the, I do. And I literally, I, I, I use the hive mind of the community oftentimes. Like, I, I, there's a whole European contingent in the community. Dutch, German, like I, I, yeah. And I will turn it over to them for that sort of stuff. It's like, can you up, to, can you quick executive summary this for me? What's going on? Right? Like I can only do so much, but I also understand that it's probably more a critique of just gen Americans in general and not maybe me. Um, it's not all about you, Kai. Um, and with, in that regard, I agree. Um, it is, it, it is, It'd be great to teach Americans that the world doesn't revolve around America. That'd be an interesting thing. But um, the truth of the matter is it kind of does, right? It's difficult to teach Americans that it, the world doesn't re revolve around Americans when it kind of does, right? In all the wrong ways, but it kind of does. Um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a weird confluence and mishmash of fucking factors and events <clears throat> um and yeah fuck the and prims fuck fuck the primitives in general fuck fuck the primitives uh we actually started the stream um did it, it with this um this is this is fucking hilarious if you hate if you got an issue with the and prims there is an andprim.org I'm not shitting you there is an andprim.org it's run by four young dutch people um, yeah, it's, it's great. Oh, it's great. It's fucking, we looked at one of, one of the fucking art, one of the articles here. Here you go. The farmers can go to hell. They literally talk shit about farmers. The, they, they start it with like talking shit about the unvaccinated and then they're like, yeah, and fuck the farmers too. Shouldn't anprim.org be carved into stone? Dude, go to anprim.org and read the read the article for yourself. It's fucking dude, anprims. Fucking primitivists in general, right? I don't right. Right on. Uh, my brother has a lot of anprim tendencies. I love the guy, but god damn, it's just some of the takes. It makes me want to rip my hair out. Yeah. Okay, that's my whole, that's my fucking, it's like talking shit about the unvaccinated. It's like, you're fucking in prims. I thought that was your whole deal. <clears throat> I'm a primitive IT professional. Um, I, I legitimately. Um, all right. I, I really want to finish chapter seven. I want to finish this last section and just be done with chapter seven this week, like before fucking bad movie night tomorrow. Um, and for those of you who like are new or like don't stop around a whole lot, by the way, we do bad movie nights, uh, on Friday nights, which tomorrow's stream, 
right? This is this is Thursday night stream for me, right? Um, 5.30 p.m. Pacific after stream, we do bad movie night on, um, on the Discord server. So um, if you like movies that are so bad, they're good. Stop by, say hello. Um, yeah, it's, it's, we're, we're up to, I don't know, sit, fuck it. I forget what movie we're up to. 72, 73 now. It's a thing. Um, we have a good time after a week of, uh, here, here we go. After a week of, after a week of doom, right? It's, it's nice to just get fucked up and watch a bad movie or two. Um, Oh, oh, one of the Anne Prim articles tries to make an argument that like music and song is too advanced for humans, like straight up fucking return to monkey shit. Like unironically, they, they're like, is, is fucking, is song in, in music a supplement, uh, su uh, sub, oh, I forget how they put phrased it. I'd have to go look it up. I fucking, it was, it was, it's so stupid. Part of my brain refuses to like even acknowledge like it's legitimately go. If you want a good laugh, go read that website. Get just, they're batshit insane, man. They're batshit insane. Um, return to primordial soup. Yep. Fucking and brims, man. Only grunting aloud. <laughs> yes. 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 Oh. <laughs> um. Can we, it, see, that's the thing is they actually like they generally are anarchists. They're just fucking they've bolted anarchism on top of something that like isn't contradictory to anarchism. It's just batshit insane. It, there is, you know what? There, no, we can. Caboose, we can. We can. Here's, here's, here's the method of analysis, right? Using intersectional analysis that is a staple of, of the anarchist milieu, we can justify our critique and our elimination of the anprims as non-anarchists by stating that their willingness to um, subject people to the uh, natural law hierarchies that would be, that would arise from the elimination of the social uh, constructs that we uh, we sort of advocate for within anarchist circles would uh, cause unjust power dynamics to arise. Therefore, they disqualify themselves as anarchists. There's an uh, there's an argument to be made there. So yeah, if we want to divorce the anprims, finally, yeah, I could I could argue it. I could argue it. Um, they're mad at, dude, Anprims are mad at a lot of stuff. Um, <clears throat> oh, all right. Yeah, this isn't too long. It's got one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven paragraphs. Yeah, you go spend a spend a weekend as an Anpram, right, Slavic? Yeah. Oh, stretch that leg, stretch that leg. No, I'm fine with the ncoms. I mean, this is this is my the my line since you're new. Like I I I'm an anarchist. Flat, right? I'm here to teach you about anarchism. I'm de here to deal with people who don't understand anarchism. I'm an anarchist. I'm a straight up and down anarchist, right? Like that's what I am about. 
There are varieties and brands and flavors of anarchism advocating for different social and economic structures and how people align them them, uh, themselves is up to them after they engage in these sort of heterarchical organizational structures, right? How you organize yourself after I give you these tools is up to you uh, because anarchism isn't prescriptive in that manner, strictly speaking, right? So that is, that is my deal. I'm not really an ANCOM on a, on a, it depends how you catch me. I, I stray from ANCOM to ANSIN, depending on what level of pragmatism you catch me at that day, right? Some days it's like, look, the best you're going to get is ANSIN out of this society. Just fucking re-democratize the workplace, get some union, let some labor movement going, get some unionization going, and fucking I'd be happy with that amount of progress in our society. Maybe we can reorder some shit after, like, sort of actual labor power in society. And then if I'm feeling like, absolutely not pragmatic and super fucking idealistic. Yeah. Build the commune. Let's get this shit going. Right. Like it's depends where you catch me, but I'm an anarchist. <clears throat> what if, uh, first guy two series is just a view of a parallel universe where they had three generations of man and the last generation forgot what it was about. Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, Uh, yeah, yeah, un, unneat, like, y- there's a bunch of, like, political streamers that have encountered that person that has just been linked, and they are, they are hugely problematic, <laughs> let's just put it that way, um, so don't be surprised if people get a little twitchy when they see your name, um, the people, people are gonna get a little fucking, like, you know, even I did when I was coming in, I was like, ooh, that's a name, right, like, that's what that comment was about, was like, oh, right? Like, are you are you on an alt, right? Like that sort of thing. Um, yeah, uh, unneat seems like good people. Neat sauce is trash. He's not good people, right? Like he's he's the type that literally goes around and like shares the like uh, trans people need to like should commit suicide memes and shit like that, right? He's he's not good people. He's 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 not great. Um, yeah. Um, Nazi memes and shit like that. And yeah, it's, 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 you know, yeah. So yeah. Glad to meet, glad, glad to meet someone redeeming the namesake, right? Glad to, glad to meet somebody redeeming the namesake. Yeah. Um, Dan, yeah. Neat, neat sauce is, um, he's an issue. Um, he, he may seem like in your chat or on, if you let him on air, cause a few of us have talked to him, um, he seems like he moderates it more, but he went nuts on our Discord server. He went nuts on our Discord server. We we sort of like pushed him over the edge and we got to see the real him, right? And he started, yeah, he, he fucking like full mask off. So heads up. Um, hey, Fratus. Um, all right. gonna ban fuck roll when that does hey do you i wouldn't blame you in the least <clears throat> he um you know he caught a ban here um all right let's do this last section and then we will have finished chapter seven ahead of schedule that that puts us ahead of schedule for finishing this document out Um, I also kind of like the idea of us building out, um, <laughs> protect on neat, ban neat sauce with extreme prejudice. Um, I also like the idea of us building out a fucking library of YouTube videos of me reading some of this theory, right? Like we'll start with the fuck the end caps theory. Um, well, like I said, I want to do what is property by Proudhon next um but we also have um the technical hand uh the investigative uh handbook um um the investigation handbook sorry um coming up next as well cassidy and i are going to get together on that and we're going to teach people how to do like investigative journalistic tactics and so like data analysis and data uh data verification online and shit like that 
and how to like, how do you find whether, you know, what, what is the, the completion of the text in that image that was part of a video that somebody recorded and uploaded? Can you identify that location and find it online? It's going to be a bunch of fucking techniques and tactics that investigative journalists use, um, in that handbook, like all three are available for free online. Um, and we will go through them, but yeah, Cassie and I are going to try and create a compressed version of that. Uh, and get all three handbooks down to like a, a workable size. And then we're going to do a series on that. So we can teach people some investigative journalistic tactics. So when you do encounter information in the wild that you have the tools necessary to like, you know, yeah, maybe somebody will also do this. But if nobody else does it, you can then pull out your fucking handbook and be like, all right, wh what exactly did we get taught? Like, yeah, we're going to do some of that shit. I'm going to teach you basically like it. Uh, Cassie, for those of you who don't know, Cassidy Reese, uh, one of my mods and longtime member of the community, um, she is a trained investigative journalist. Like, that's what her degree is in. Um, so, yeah, she and I are going to get together on that one and fucking do, like, put together a series of something and teach people those tools. And I, I think, like, I've done the operational security for activists. Um, <coughs> and now I'm doing how to argue with fucking ANCAPs. And, um, yeah. And next we're going to, we're going to do the, the, some of the investigative journalists and then we're going to do some more theory. So I've got like content actually planned out, which is weird for me. I don't, I'm not that dude. Like I fucking, you know, like I, I haven't been using the stream that way, but yeah, we're going to start using the stream that way. Um, we've got, what are the other standalones, um, that I have? Cause I've got a bunch of standalone videos now at this point. Um, Channel playlists, standalone videos. Um, okay, so I did the primer on jury nullification. I did the how police officer fatalities, uh, police officer fatalities or how to control populace using lies and force. I did the operational security for an activist. I did the ANSIN 101. I did the history of May Day and why Labor Day is a sham. And now we're going to have, uh, we have the ANCAP play, anti ANCAP playlist. And then we'll, yeah, we'll have the investigative journalist and then we'll have some theory. Yeah. We'll start having theory reads. Um, oh, well, I mean, I've got two essays on noise boy on, um, the origins of and problems with modern policing. And I've also got the police officer fatalities or how to control, uh, manipulate and control a populace uh, by lies and force one. Um, it's, um, yeah, it, it, yeah. Like if you want to know, like if you, I don't know where you're from, if you're in the U.S., um, but like, yeah, the, the origins of and problems with modern policing is a really interesting like narrative thread that I weave. Um, sort of going back to um, Peel, uh, the Peel Acts and the, uh, the Met in, in London, which inspired most of the modern police forces. Um, it, it's, it's, and so like, you know, yeah, there's, there's tons of like, there's an interesting, I've done this so many times. There's, there's two confluences noise. Um, it's the, the big stick in the North and then the slave patrols in the South. Um, the big stick in the north is literally union busting and big business and industrialists and merchant class financing and funding and creating the police departments that were used for union busting and uh, set, uh, and uh, dissolving labor disputes and fucking going in and literally cracking skulls of like labor organizers and stuff like that. And then in the south you have the slave patrols, which are you know ad hoc terrorist units wandering the streets and bringing back their property and you know and also contractors. Um, they when plantation owners didn't have the stomach for the um, uh, <clears throat> discipline disciplinary aspects of owning human chattel, um, they'd contract out to the slave patrols and they'd chop off hands or feet or that sort of thing or cut out a fucking tongue. Um, so yeah, they, they were sort of the ad hoc like terrorist unit roaming the fucking, you know, and then they do pro uh, property retrieval and then they do the, the disciplinary con uh, uh, like external contracting. Um, and so you sort of have this confluence that becomes this unbroken thread of policing. And I, I, I follow that thread through all these sort of, um, elements of, and so like here, um, for those of you who don't know the website, all of my stuff is at kaisthings.com. And 
the writing section is like that. There you go. Um, I'm particularly proud of the ten poles of oppression uh, essay. Like, give it a read. Give all of us. Like, seriously. Like, I'm, I'm a halfway decent essayist. Um, but like, all of my stuff is Creative Commons. So like, it's share alike, attribution, remix, whatever. Like my video, my photography, my writing, right? As long as you say I got it from here, it's, you know, spread it. Spread it to the wind. Do what you got to do. Um, lefty. Um, yeah, they're, I mean, not. Okay. So this is the reason that like anarchists and leftists in general are really are like twitchy around the fucking, like we've got trauma involved with the, the, um, um, the, the, the term police you know, right. Like police force, right? Like it's, it's, we're, we're really fucking twitchy about that language, right? It's like, you know, no, no, you can't have a legitimate police force, but there are methodologies for like community, like, um, Slavic. I've been doing this for a lot of, a lot of time, a lot of time. Um, a lot of my life has been dedicated to this sort of praxis. Um, Given the advancement of my, like, you know, chronic pain and stuff like that, just maintaining, like, getting out there and doing it the way I used to do, I can't do anymore. I'm too old for that. I'm too fucking, like, disabled for that, right? I'm in too much pain for that, um, like I used to do, right? Mm -hmm. Right? We don't need to talk about it, but we all know what what Kai's talking about, right? Um, But what I can do is teach. I can do that in spades, right? (laughs) Um... And so like back to, but back to lefty, like there's, there's methodologies for ensuring the safety and functioning of a community, right? Like there's, there's ways to secure the possessions and usage rights. There's ways to ensure that things don't burn down and that fucking rapists and murderers don't roam the streets freely, right? There's methodologies for that, um, that don't necessarily entail the monopolization of the use of force in the same manner and mechanism that police do in that iteration. So there um i'm not a fuck north korea like fuck north korea right fuck juche fuck monarchism it's monarchism it's not communism it's monarchism right like it's that's monarchism it's fucking dude it's it's oligopoly of some sort it's fucking monarchism of some sort it's like i'm the fucking eternal leader king person and my lineage is all of your leaders designated here on out right like that's monarchism that's a fucking that's a king fuck that shit that's not communism yeah like that's 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 fucking necropoly too yeah because the fucking dude's still considered the king right like fuck he's still the leader kim like soon the original one or whatever the fuck his name was dick dynasty (laughs) you know what i think that would actually be fresh for me dick dynasty that one you know what how have i not heard that before that's fucking i like that um if you think North Korea is communist, then you probably think the Nazis were socialists. <laughs> yeah, Dick Dynasty. I like that. It is, isn't it? Fucking. Oh, man. Yeah, no, that's fuck that. Fuck, fuck North Korea. And fuck any tankies that hit me with that shit. Fucking critical support for North Korea. One, anarchist, right? Just out of the gate, anarchist, right? But two, Why do the tankies never know what critical support means? Can I just have an aside for a second here on this one? How the fuck do the tankies never understand what critical support means? It means I support you, but I have criticism, right? I've got words of improvement. Bruh, you're fucking up. Look, I still love you, man, but you're fucking up, right? That's critical support, not undying loyalty with unquestioning like you know like like advocacy for it's it's absolutely like how do none of these fuckers know what critical support actually means i just just an aside just an aside uh (laughs) yeah very very yeah, very uh, fucking um, binary, aren't they? Oh, a lot I know. 
Critical is going the way of literally. Uh, tankies don't understand pragmatism, only blind dogmatism. I mean, yes. Yeah. Um. All right. What about China's system? <laughs> uh, Fuck the Chinese government there. All right. Anyway, so we just get that sound clip out of the way. Um, I, I, I don't, I, I, I can't, I'm, I'm, you need to separate Western tankies who love North Korea for the aesthetics with people like me who understand how they got there in the first place can feel for the Korean people. I would not define you as a tanky Slavic. You're, you, you seem an ML. Yeah. Like you seem an ML, which I mean, again, like there's a reason that fucking Bakunin and Marx basically like fought like cats and dogs. And I'm sure if we had a theory off, we'd hate each other like for that moment. Right. We definitely have disagreements on organizational structures and modalities. Right. But Tankies born of the British Communist Party in the 19, was it 83 fucking support movement and then fast forwarded through the sort of and then run through the descriptive language set and the online sphere unto today. Right. Like you don't you don't seem like like what we would call a tanky now. Right. You're 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 probably a classical tanky as opposed to a, a modern tanky. If we're going to start, dude. You're a classical tanky, not a neo tanky. <laughs> okay. We're gonna have to start describing Haz as a neo tanky. <laughs> I think I just coined that. I'm pretty sure I just coined that. Like I'm pretty sure that just happened for the first time, y'all. <laughs> We've just created a distinction in the tanky ranks. <laughs> That they themselves don't even really, like, give language to. We just created classical and neo-tankyism. <laughs> Neo-classical tankyism. Oh. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh. Uh, neo tankies don't believe in female urethras. For those of you who don't know what that is about, God bless you. But I'm updating the wiki due to this discovery. <laughs> uh, do you follow classical tanky, revisionist tanky, or neo tanky? <laughs> oh. Uh, I'm still looking for that there at all. <laughs> uh, postmodernist neoclassical tanky theory. Fucking GL with the cursed, the cursed one. I was trying to come up with a cursed one in my head, but I'm laughing too much at it. Fucking GL, thanks for the cursed one. Fucking postmodernist neoclassical tanky theory with a revisionist bent. Uh, fucking has he two holes? Yes, fucking has he two holes? Um, uh, female neo tankies believe female anatomy is Western degeneracy. Oh God, he's so fucking dumb. He's so fucking dumb. I I look fucking sorry, folks. It's not ableism if it's true. That that motherfucker is dumb as sticks. The fact that he can discuss, like, Hegelian philosophy and shit as deeply as he can is staggering. Oh, man. Post-apocalyptic, post-capitalist, post-communist tanky. <laughs> uh, if you're wrong, just double down. Works every time. Oh, man. <laughs> Neo-tankyism. I mean, yeah, we see the difference, but I mean, Slavic at the end of the day, like, I mean, this is like, this is back to Bakunin and Marx's 
fight, right? Like, are, are you familiar with like the what Bakunin and Marx had out at the first international? Like, this is this is my critique of communism in its like raw state. Forget after, forget before fucking Lenin gets his hands on it. Forget before the USSR fucking gets their hands on it. Forget all that shit, right? Like in its incarnation, like in its initial incarnation, I have critiques, right? No, no, no. First, first. Slavic. Yeah, Bakunin and Marx had it out at the first international. Yeah. And the, that's why the anarchists were not invited back to the second international. It's because Bakunin basically fucking took the piss out of Marx during the first international. Yeah. It's, it's, dude, it's, it's fucking anarchist lore at this point. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it, it was a thing. We didn't get invited back. We didn't get invited back, man. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I can read you what he wrote. Um, I got it around here somewhere. Hang on. There you go. Here's, here, here's, here's our, like, here's our complaint. Uh, Slavic. Um, Marx is an authoritarian and centralizing communist. He wants what we want, the complete triumph of economic and social equality, but he wants it in the state and through the state power through the dictatorship of a very strong and, so to say, despotic provisional government, that is, by the negation of liberty. His economic ideal is the state is sole owner of the land and of all kinds of capital, cultivating the land under the management of state engineers and controlling all industrial and commercial associations with the state capital. We want the same triumph of economic and social equality through the abolition of the state and all that passes by the name of law, which in our view is the permanent negation of human rights. We want the reconstruction of society and the unification of mankind to be achieved, not from above downwards by any sort of authority, nor by socialist officials, engineers, or other accredited men of learning, but from below upwards by the free federation of all kinds of workers' associations liberated from the yoke of the state. This is this is literally Bakunin on Marx, right? And this is sort of, this is what got us kicked out of the fucking internationals, basically. <laughs> And so that's that that lies at the um that lies at the heart of it. Well, but I mean that's 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 the the anarchistic line. Like, you know, like you but you get it, right? Like this is what I was saying about like we would have we would have disagreements. Um we we we, we fundamentally disagree on like solutions, but like, you know, we understand each other at least, right? Like, you know, it's not it's not like the fucking goddamn fucking some of these idiots. <laughs> right? Like <laughs> Jesus goddamn Christ. It's not like the end caps. Oh, it's like you're not no. Well agree to disagree. No. <laughs> stop stop fucking abusing the words. Um so yeah. With that, let me finish out this last section. Oh, thank you for that welcome distraction though. Fucking Jesus Christ. But I need I want to get this fucking done. I want to get chapter seven done. I can get it uploaded to YouTube. That means we got chapter six and seven done this week. It's fucking burning through them. Um, I wouldn't be able to do that off the top of my head. Noise. I wouldn't be able to do that off the top of my head. I'd need to fucking, I'd need to pull a reference. I'd, I'd, I'd literally pull like the International Encyclopedia of Political Science for that and get you a nuanced definition. Okay. Right? Because that's not my, that's not my wheelhouse, right? I would actually, hey, Slavic ML, what's the difference between Bolshevism and Menshevism? Slavic's probably better at that distinction than I would be. Yeah, right? Like Lenin, I like Lenin, Slavic ML, like those guys are going to be better at that distinction than I am. I would, I would pull a reference guide for that. Um... Trotsky. Um, anyway. <laughs> um,
Oh, Jesus Christ. That Ziperuski guy is fucking special. All right. Um, yeah, we have classical tankies. <laughs> uh, all right. <clears throat> uh. Chapter 7, Section 3. Can there be right-wing anarchism? <laughs> uh, Hart, of course, mentions the individualist anarchist calling Tucker's ideas laissez-faire liberalism. However, Tucker called his, called his ideas socialism and presented a left-wing critique of most aspects of liberalism, particularly its Lockean-based private property rights. Tucker based much of his ideas on Proudhon, so if Hart dismisses the latter as a socialist, then this must apply to the former. Given that he notes that there are, quote, two main kinds of anarchist thought, namely communist anarchism, which denies the rights of individual to seek profit, charge rent or interest and to own property, and a right-wing proprietary anarchism, which vigorously defends these rights. <laughs> then Tucker like Godwin, would have to be placed in the left-wing camp. Tucker, after all, argued that he aimed for the end of profit, the end of interest, and rent, and attacked private property in land and housing beyond occupancy and use. As can be seen, Hart's account of the history of anti-state liberalism is, of course, flawed. Godwin is included only by ignoring his views on property, Views which, in many ways, reflect the later socialist, i.e. anarchist, analysis of Proudhon. He then discusses a few individuals who were alone in their opinions, even within extreme free market right, and all of whom knew of anarchism and explicitly rejected the name for their respective ideologies. In fact, they preferred the term government to describe their systems when, on the face of it, it would be hard to reconcile the usual so-called anarcho-capitalist definition of anarchism as being no government. Hart's discussion of individualist anarchism is equally flawed, failing to discuss their economic views just as well as it links to left-wing anarchism would be obvious. However, the similarities of Molinari's views with what would become later known as so-called anarcho-capitalism are clear. Hart notes that with Molinari's death in 1912, quote, liberal anti-statism virtually disappeared until it was rediscovered by the economist Murray Rothbard in the late 1950s. While this Fringe is somewhat bigger than previously. The fact remains that the ideas expounded by uh, Rothbard are just as alien to the anarchist tradition as Molinari's. It's a shame that Rothbard, like his predecessors, did not call his ideology something other than anarchism. Not only would it have been more accurate, it would have also led to much less confusion and no need to write this entire document. As it stands, the only reason why so-called anarcho-capitalism is considered a form of anarchism by some is because one person, Murray fucking Rothbard, decided to steal the name of a well-established and widespread political and social theory and movement and apply it to an ideology with little, if any, in common with it. As Hart inadvertently shows, it's not a firm base to build a claim. That anyone can consider so-called anarcho-capitalism as anarchist simply flows from a lack of knowledge about anarchism. As numerous anarchists have argued, including this one, for example, quote, Rothbard's conjunction of anarchism with capitalism, according to David Wyke, results in a conception that is entirely outside the mainstream of anarchist theoretical writings or social movements. This conjunction is a self-contradiction. The main con uh, traditions of anarchism are entirely different. These traditions and theoretical writings associated with them express the perspectives and aspirations and also sometimes the rage of oppressed people in human society. Not only those economically oppressed, although major anarchist movements have been mainly movements of workers and peasants, but also those oppressed by power in all of those social dimensions, including, of course, that of political power expressed in the state. In other words, anarchism re represents a moral commitment Rothbard's anarchism I take to be diametrically opposite. It's a shame that some academics consider only the word Rothbard uses as relevant rather than the content and its relation to anarchist theory and history. 
If they did, they'd soon realize that the expressed opposition of so many anarchists to so-called anarcho-capitalism uh, anarcho is something which cannot be ignored or dismissed. In other words, a right-wing anarchist cannot and does not exist, no matter how often they use that word to describe their ideology. As Bob Black put it, a right-wing anarchist is just a minarchist who'd abolish the state to his own satisfaction by calling it something else. They don't denounce what the state does, they just object to who it's, who's doing it, libertarian as conservative. The reason is simple. Anarchist po uh, economics and politics cannot be artificially separated. They're linked. Godwin and Proudhon did not stop their analysis at the state. They extended it to the social relationships produced by inequality of wealth, i.e. economic power as well as political power. To see why, we need only consult Rothbard's work, as noted in the last section. For Rothbard, the key issue with the voluntary taxationists was not who determined the body of absolute law, but rather who enforced it. In his discussion, he argued that a democratic defense agency is at a disadvantage in his free market system, or as he put it, quote, it would, in fact, be competing at a severe disadvantage, having been established on the principle of democratic voting. Looked at as a market phenomenon, democratic voting, one vote, one person, is simply the method of the consumer cooperative. Empirically, it has been demonstrated time and again that cooperatives cannot compete successfully against stock-owned companies, especially when both are equal before the law. There's no reason to believe that cooperatives for defense would be any more efficient. Hence, we may expect the old cooperative government to wither away through loss of customers on the market, while joint stock, i.e. corporate defense agencies, would become the prevailing market form. So many problems with that statement. But let's just start with, notice how he assumes that both cooperative and corpor uh, corporations would be equal before the law? But who determines that law? Obviously not a democratically elected government, as the idea of one person, one vote, in determining the common law are all subject to its inefficient. Nor does he think, like the individualist anarchist, that the law would be judged by juries along with the facts. As was noted in Chapter 1, Section 4, he rejects that in favor of it be de being determined by libertarian lawyers and jurists. Thus, the law is unchangeable by ordinary people and enforced by private defense agencies hired to protect liberty and property of the owning class. In the case of capitalist economy, this means defending the power of landlords and capitalists against rebel tenants and workers. This means that Rothbard's common law code will be determined, interpreted, enforced, and amended by corporations based on the will of the majority of shareholders, i.e., the rich. That hardly seems likely to produce equality before the law. As he argues in a footnote, there is a strong a priori reason for believing that corporations will be superior to cooperatives in any given situation. For if each owner receives only one vote regardless of how much money he has invested in a project and earnings are divided in the same way, there's no incentive to invest more than the next man. In fact, every incentive is the other way. This hampering of investment militates strongly and against the cooperative form. So, if the law is determined by defense agencies and courts then, it will be determined by those who have invested most in these companies. It's, it is, as it's unlikely that the rich will invest in defense firms, which don't support their property rights, power, profits, and definition of property rights, it's clear that agencies which favor the wealthy will survive on the market. The idea that market demand will counter this uh, class rule seems unlikely, given Rothbard's own argument. After all, in order to compete successfully, you need more than demand. You need source of investment. If cooperative defense for, uh, agencies do form, they'll be at a market disadvantage due to the lack of investment. Even though cooperatives are more efficient than capitalist firms' lack of investment caused by the lack of control by capitalist Rothbard's notes, this, uh, as, it, this stops them replacing wage slavery. Thus, capitalist wealth and power inhibits the spread of freedom in production. If we apply his own argument to Rothbard's system, we suggest that the market in defense will also stop the spread of more libertarian associations thanks to capitalist power and wealth. In other words, like any market, Rothbard's defense market will simply reflect the interests of the elite, not the masses. Moreover, 
you can expect any democratic defense agency like a union to support, say, striking workers or squatting tenants to be crushed. This is because, as Rothbard stresses, all defense firms would be expected to apply the common law as written by libertarian lawyers and jurists. If they did not, they would be quickly labeled outlaw agencies and crushed by the others, legally. Ironically, Tucker would join Bakunin and Kropokin in an anarchist court accused to violate uh, accused of violating anarchist law by practicing and advocating occupancy and use rather than the approved Rothbardian property rights. Even if these democratic defense agencies could survive and not be driven out of the market by a combination of lack of investment and violence due to their outlaw status, there is another problem. As was discussed in chapter one, Landlords and capitalists have a monopoly of decision-making power over their property. As such, they can simply refuse to recognize any democratic agency as a legitimate defense association and use the same tactics perfected against unions to ensure that it does not uh, gain a foothold in their domain. See chapter 6 on more details for that one. Clearly, then, a right-wing anarchism is impossible as any system based on capitalist property rights will simply be an oligarchy run by and for the wealthy. As Rothbard notes, any defense agency based on democratic principles will not survive in the, mar uh, survive in the market for defense simply because it doesn't allow the wealthy to control it and its decisions. Little wonder Proudhon argued that the laissez-faire capitalism meant that, quote, the victory of the strong over the weak, of those who own property over those who own nothing. Um, all right. Maniac, thank you for the raid. What's up, y'all? Um, we are officially done recording fucking sections, so I'm going to turn, like, all of the alerts and shit back on now. Um, and I think Kez is here now, too. So what's up, Kez? Um, and give me a second. I'll get you that skirt spin. I saw it. Um, and subscription. Let's fucking. And turn on the main alerts. There we go. Oh, I see. Yeah, no. Ha ha. We got a classical tanky and a neo tanky in the same chat. Oh. oh. Sip. Yeah. Um, Kez, we have made a distinction. We have, we have officially, the anarchists made a distinction between them. <clears throat> the more you say, the more I think it's a valid classification. I, I hundred percent think it is. I think we need to draw a distinction. Um, okay. So I'm going to do some uploading here. I'm going to finish the workflow. So that was six, five. So that's seven, seven, one, seven, two, and seven, three, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and craps 7.0, 7 7.1, 7.2, and 7.3. Oh, I feel good about that. Fucking knocked out. Knocked out that chapter. Um, go over to the YouTube panel. Um, oh no, think of the left unity. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, wait, did the left splinters more? The left has never been unified. Never once. The left has never been unified. It's not a thing. It doesn't exist. It, it was never an aspect or character characteristic of left, uh, of leftism. It's never been a unified monolith. Um, I'm going to call myself a techno utopian classical proto tanky. Um, uh, 
Okay. Upload. Are these done downloading? These are done downloading. All right, cool. Um, 7.3 to 7.0. Done and done skis. Let's get Notepad open. Notepad++, by the way, because homey rolls like that. Um, and let me get some of these chapter headings up. Was I doing? Okay, I was doing the point O's. Uh, all right, point zero. Forgive me for ignoring you beautiful faces for a second. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna finish this workflow. Just get it done, get it uploaded. Publish. All right, seven one. What is seven one? Seven was, yeah, our competing government then I gave them. Um, I'm gonna capitalize, yeah. I'm gonna fucking change a couple of these things. Willis, no. Publish, and on to the next one, hopefully. Nope, not done uploading it. All right. Um, uh, neat. It's not, it's not wrong. It's not a bad idea. It's just, it's just like, it will be a lot harder than you, you, you might expect it to be. Just know that going in, right? Good, 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 good on you for trying. But yeah, there's, there's a... You know, <clears throat> there's a long history there. <laughs> there's a long history. Um, let's see. So get this 7-2. Seven 7-2 two. Right, seven is uploading. Cool. And then final one is seven three. Still love that. Can there be right wing anarchism? It's adorable. Ah. Uh, yeah, generally we don't get shot in the back. We don't get stabbed in the back. We get shot in the back of the head. Um. <coughs> or in the case. <coughs> Or in the case of um, Leninist Russia, the anarchist uh, club in Moscow gets literally artillery shelled, and Lenin uh, declares open season on anarchists, and we uh, a bunch of us get machine gunned in the streets, and then put on trial. Some of the survivors get put on trial and summarily executed. It's a you know, we 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 we've the anarchists don't have great relations with some elements within the, 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 the MLs, right? And I mean, let's not even talk about like fucking Kronstadt, right? Like they weren't even full-blown anarchists. They're just like, hey, can we be in control of our own labor and like our own production? And they fucking, they're like, we'd like to show you the forests around Kronstadt. Why don't you come with, uh, come, uh, with us for a walk? 2,000 dead, right? Like, <laughs> they're just like, hmm, yeah. So there's, there's some, there's some, you know, there's, there's some <clears throat> rocky history there. Uh, seven, three. Yep. Seven, three. Cool. Done. Show more. Um, recording date. There we go. XXXX publish. Eh, voila. Um, and those are fucking working. 
I heard an ML on here saying that the, maybe the KGB and Stasi were cool. Actually, Jesus Christ. Um, I mean, I'm all for it, but I'm not going to forget the history sip. That history colors the present, right? Those who are those who do not learn their history are doomed to repeat it. I know my anarchist history. I know the history of my relations. I'm perfectly happy working with my fellow leftists. I'm perfectly happy, but this is why I'm also post-left, because I have critiques as an anarchist of the substitutionalism, the regimentation, the hierarchical nature that a lot of, let's say, um, some of the more traditional communists and MLs on the left like to engage in that lends itself to authoritarianism, right? Like, I mean, that's, that's ML. Anarchists aren't utopians. There's a clear and important distinction to be made there. The authoritarianism and the eugenics. And SIP, no authoritarianism is a meaningless word. Cool. So is Marxism. So is communism. Cool. Word, words words have no meaning anyway. I mean, they're at the end of the day, they're all just mouth and throat and tongue noises that a higher primate grunts out. And we hope that there's some sort of post-structuralist... Um, you know, non uh, uh, sort of uh, non post structuralist meaning that can be associated with it. All right, like um, up is down. Um, you mentioned post leftism, so are you a fan of like the Invisible Committee? My post leftism comes from more like the Jason McQuinn camp, um, rather than the sort of um, the. I mean, the Invisible Committee was French, right? Like, I mean, it's it's you know, it's it's that they were inherently French. Um, uh, but no, my my post leftism comes from more like the McQuinn camp of post leftism. Um, I'm not opposed to like um, I can't I can't say like coupa coupa coupa. Hey, fucking fratus, c o u p a t. Give me a phonetic spelling, please, and thank you. Um, Julian coupa coupa. I don't I don't fucking know how to say that too. Uh, um, c o u p a t. Uh, copat. King Koopa? Yes. 100% was King Koopa. Um, Koopa. Okay, so it is Koopa. Um, thank you for twos. Um, yeah, like, I'm, I'm not opposed to, like, Koopa, but, I mean, I, I come at it from a more, like, almost a, uh, a cow pat. Yes, it was 100% cow pat. Um, like, and, and plus, like, I mean, it's been translated, like, Hurley, I think, did the translation. Um, but I mean, it's all original in French and that I, I mean, translations get a little hinky for me sometimes too. Um, so yeah, aware of, but not derived from, right? Um, yeah, my, my post leftism comes from like the sort of Jesus, like, um, 1996 forward crew. Right, like it's it's sort of the the Bob Black, Jason McQuinn camp of like American anarchists, like West Coast American anarchists that are still writing theory to this day, right? Um, and sort of that analysis, and I'm and there's 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 for sure, um, some like you know Invisible Committee fucking influence in McQuinn and Black, I'm I'm certain, but. Like they're they're sort of writing at the same time simultaneously. So, um, it, like that's I mean McQuinn. I think McQuinn predates the Invisible Committee, right? Black certainly does. Um, like 
I don't fuck this. When when is two our friends come out? Uh he invisible committee. I can spell, I swear. There we go. Publication date 2014 for to our friends. Um Yeah. So Yeah, literally mine comes from like authors who are pre date pre writing ahead of that, right? So yeah. Um What do we got? Oh God, this, dude, this is, dude, this is, what, are, what did you just fucking put into chat, Victorious? get the long-term side effect data of course they do this because they have to morally obligate no that's a way to hide reality but they added they unblinded it and five more people died on the vaccine side none on the placebo side after that i mean five great numbers anyway all right um Ah, thank you, GL, for catching me up on that. <laughs> Again, love it when the hive mind takes care of things. Um, I mean, it's not like entire studies have been done on like myocard myocarditis and uh, sudden death in athletes. Ugh. Anyway, um been an interesting run we like coined new terms we got fucking got dude we got chapter seven done oh fucking in one go that leaves chapter eight is okay so 8.0 8.1 point two three four five six seven chapter nine ten one ten two ten three eleven point oh eleven one two three four five six so that's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. 19 more sections to go, but some of them are kind of short. Like some of them are like not that long. Um, are any of them really, really long? Okay, so what was that? Chapter nine, uh, chapter nine, section zero is pretty fucking long, but oh, it's only one. There's only just chapter nine. Um,. Ten one is long. Ten two is ten two is long as well. The elevens are pretty short. All right, we're gonna be, we're gonna be able to bang out a bunch of these, I think. Um, eight is a fucking long ass chapter. There's eight eight point oh eight point one eight point two eight point three eight point four eight point five eight point six eight point seven. Um, but depending on how my voice holds for next week, we might be able to get like through chapter eight and nine next week. Um, (laughs) 
fucking Kez um above you, Kez. Jesus Christ. Um Kez um Inversion, interestingly enough. Um uh like With my legs, like if I put them up on a wall, like lay lay down and then put the legs up on the wall, um, drain the blood, like literally drain the blood and make it difficult and like like that will that will help with some of that. Um, short of that, um, go to the store and get like a bottle of like lidocaine gel and just slather it on. Just slather it on. Um, that's about short of that, like, that you can do. There's not much. Uh, hands, feet, right tip, most of my back and hip and groin. It's a nightmare. Oh, fucking A. Um, yeah. Um, so hands, feet, right tit. Back, hip, and groin. Um, yeah, I don't have much for that. Dude, hot bath. All you can do is get high enough not to care. Yeah, it's about all you can do in a lot of those situations. Um, yeah, I got nothing for you, man. I'm fuck I'm sorry, but like, yeah, I got nothing for you. I mean, I could say, like, you know, take a ton of anti-inflammatories and shit like that. Um, you know, to fucking drink, like, go get some turmeric and grate it raw into a fucking, t like, a tea ball and fucking start drinking that nonstop. But at that level, at that, like, flare level, there's not much, anything short of, like, hard drugs does anything. It's just, you, 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 like, a hot, hot bath, which you don't have access to, or drugs, Lots and lots of fucking drugs, <laughs> right? Like that's that's basically where that comes down to. Um, Slavic, welcome to my channel. Um, we also do DGen story time, so we can go from political theory. And fucking Tokyo drift that shit right into a story about me being a collared submissive and getting fist, tra fist trained by a dom. That's how this channel rolls. There's a reason we're marked as adults uh, in an 18 plus stream for a reason. Like we will straight up Tokyo drift this bitch into some wacky fucking territory, right? So... It's, it's, and given that I suffer from chronic pain, right? I have progress, idiopathic progressive small fiber neuropathy, um, polyneuropathy, non-length dependent, right? So I know what it is to be in constant burning pain, right? Like just always. So Kez, of course, would ask for advice. So that's, you know, yeah. Welcome to the channel. <laughs> I have uh, Paramol, which mixes opioids and Tylenol, and I smoke copious amounts of weed. I'm exhausted and in agony. Kez... Yeah. Yeah. It's a thing. Um, it's a thing. Uh, Kratom could be helpful instead of hard drugs. I don't almost fucking... Dude, I've done my fair share of Kratom. Um, dude, it's got some of the same fucking effects. Like, people who advocate for Kratom sort of downplay exactly how strong Kratom can be sometimes. Like, if you get some of the en enhanced versions of it like i i got my hands on yeah um but i mean i am with kaiser like compared to like you know pharmaceutical grade opioids it's only so much right um directions unclear did drugs became gay did crime i respect it uh <laughs> Lefty, I mean, I, I got my hands on, like, I got a, I, 
for those of you who are new and don't know, we run a bingo card and one of the squares is literally Kai has a guy, right? I've got a guy for everything. I've spent years setting up like supply lines and networks and contacts, right? I've got a guy for everything. And I've got a guy for Kratom, right? He's over in California. Um, and he like hooked me up with this fucking enhanced version, which is basically like Kratom extract plus Kratom, right? Like take the Kratom, um, they take it like in its raw form, they spray the extract over it, and then they crush and grind the entire thing to a powder. It's insane, right? And I, I have a guy for that, right? It's, it's, I, I got a guy for everything, right? You need duck, duck fat? I got a guy for duck fat. You need some elk? I got a guy for duck, uh, for elk. You need some hand-blown fucking bong? I got a guy up in the Otter, uh, Adirondacks in New York who does fucking glass work, uh, glass work, right? I got a guy for everything. Um, and so, yeah, I got a Kratom guy. Like, I, I know a guy, right? Like, that's, that's, dude, that is life, right? Like, let me tell you f people, like, this is, this is life, get a guy. That's everything. That's everything. You should have a guy for everything, right? Um, yes, Slavic. Kratom, Kratom is in, uh, opioid, uh, is, uh, opioid receptor, in, uh, antagonist. Just, yeah, this is anarchism. It really kind of is, right? Like, what, what are you doing through, going through fucking, like, Amazon and shit like that. Like, look, I've had to buy stuff through Amazon. I get it. Right? You just, you need the fucking thing tomorrow and it's like, fuck this shit. Like, I get it. I get it. There's no ethical consumption or capitalism, but put some fucking work in and get some people, right? Here. Here's, here's my latest guy, right? Found, found this crew. I complained about this a while back. For those of you who heard this complaint, I rectified the complaint. Here you go. Some of you on Discord have seen this already. I'm not putting it on. So, my previous caller, I hated. So, I got a guy. Canadian leather, leather worker. Buffalo leather. Faux fur. Hand riveted. I have a guy. I got a guy for everything. Yeah. I, I hated my last caller, right? I got a guy. Maniac. Um, yeah. I got a lesbian for that. She does great work. Dude, lesbians are handy. Lesbians are handy. Uh, <laughs> Makasaki, thank you for the follow. Um, you got two guys doing leather work? Nice. Um, dude, Fucking custom leather work in the kink scene. I'm telling you, fucking good way to make some cash if you need it. Um, it's a good Bill McClintock mashup of Heartbreaker and Hellbent for leather. Nice. Um, I got one guy who has many guys. Um, I can do some of myself, but they're actual experts. Yeah, that's, that's, dude, Leatherwork, Leatherworks is fucking, dude. Um, yeah, get a guy. And your guy doesn't have to be a guy. Guy is, dude, I'm, I'm West Coast America, right? Dude, guy, and bro, right? Like, that's, I'm sorry, you're all dudes, you're all guys, and you're all bros, right? Like, that's just how we, that's how we operate. <laughs> it's just, it's ingrained. Don't try, don't try and stamp out my culture, right? Like, this is, this is, this is the vernacular of my people at this point. <laughs> don't fuck with this shit. Um, I have a, um, this is, this is, this is West Coast American working class vernacular at this point. That's just how it works. I have a friend here opening up a toy shop, kink club, and I'm excited for them. Nice. Nice. I could be a solid advisor for that. Um, one of these days, like, like one, one of these days, the money's going to run out. It's just the truth. Like, one of these days, like, the money's going to run out. And I'm going to have to fucking learn to monetize some of my skill sets again. 
which I'm going to hate. I'm going to fucking hate it. But, you know, I've got a weird, eclectic set of skill sets at this point. And I don't know how I'll end up doing that. Right? Like, I think, like, I need to just find some rich fucks. Like, stupid rich fucks. Right? Stupid rich. That are too busy to do their own shopping. And, like, sourcing and shit like that. And who just want the best of everything. Right? Like, that's that would be an ideal gig for me. Is just some stupid rich fuck who has no idea and just part them from their money, right? And just like direct them to all these artisanal producers and shit like that, right? Like all these small, uh, small time producers that I, I I'm aware of. Like yeah, like Astro. Like yeah, like a Fixer would be a Fixer would be a good gig for me. Like I'd be I'd be really fucking good at it. Right. And I'd be ethical about it. Right. Like, hey, hey, douchebag with all of your ill gotten gains that fucking you exploited all of the fucking labor creates all wealth. Right. You fucking exploited labor. Well, I'm going to redirect some of that back in. Right. Like and I, I would I would 100 percent fucking tell every last one of those artisanal and all of those makers and creators that I would get fucking I'd be pointing them at. I'd be like, mark it up 300 percent. Well, I already make shut the fuck up, mark it up 300%. This fucker's too stupid to know the difference, right? Like, yeah, triple your fucking prices. He's, he's too, too stupid to know the fucking difference and he's got cash to spare. Trust me, mark it up. Okay? Like, don't even, don't even fucking worry about it, homie, right? Yeah, like, I, w- I would be super good at it and I'd be eth- ethical. Burn this VOD, this carpet. Fucking... I, for two, I mean, it, you know, you give it up the game, dude, fucking the game is fucking like, um, most fucking weird hellscape jobs that shouldn't get, uh, shouldn't really exist. Get super money. Yeah. Personal shoppers get fucking money. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, no, it's fucking, you, you fucking get, deliver a good product, deliver a good service, like quality, which is all I deal with to be perfectly honest. Um, When you actually meet someone who's like a banana, what's that? Like 50 pounds? And I'm like, adopt me, daddy. Um, Yeah. Like, I know, like, I know quality. I deal with quality. Um, And I'd be good at that. Like, that's, that's, I'm trying to figure out, like, when, when the money finally runs out, because it'll happen eventually, um, what I'm going to do, because I'm not going back into IT. I've talked about this a few, uh, like, on one other stream. I'm like, I'm not, I'm not going back into IT. I can't do it. I can't do it. I spent my life in IT. For those of you who don't know the fucking Kai story at this point, fucking let's just say I literally spent my life in IT from age four up to running an independent consultancy in Las Vegas for like big budget fucking contracts, right? At, by the age of 25, right? I spent my life in IT. I can't go back to it. Um, but one of these days, I'm going to fucking have to find a way to do some shit again. Um... And I don't know what I'm going to go to. <laughs> I've been building a weird skill set the last like decade, decade and a half. I don't know what, what, what that CV is going to look like. Um, neat. It, I, it wasn't the tech that burned me out. It was the capitalism. Legitimately. It wasn't keeping up with the technology. I, I loved keeping up with the technology, having to learn something new continuously and be like forced into it. I loved that. I loved that. It was getting irate calls from CEOs at fucking four in the morning because he was too stupid. We just replaced this entire mail system and I'm not getting my email. I demand you come in here, right? I can do this via remote. I want you here right now. Drive all the way across fucking town. Walk into the fucking building. Fucking walk up to his, uh, his terminal. He's getting email. He's getting email. There's no fucking troubleshooting to be done here, Need. He's getting email. The email's coming in up above. He just needs to scroll up. Email's piling in. He's just scrolled down in the list. That's all. All I had to do was literally walk up and go... I'm out. 
right? Like I, I, you can only do that so long before you just fucking, you're done. You're done, right? Like, yeah, classic pep cack. Problem exists between keyboard and chair. Classic pep cack. Um, like, like, like that's, that's most of my gig was basically like going in and being like the hitman, right? Like your network sucks. Your IT people suck. Fire that guy. And here's the project bid. Here's what we need to do to like overhaul everything. Right. And I'll fucking, I'll, I'll contract out what I don't want to do. And then I'll do everything else myself. Right. Like I'll do the, the main controllers and the, the fucking switches and the routers. And I would never do wiring. I don't pull wire. Um, and like I'll do the exchange server setup or I'll do whatever you fucking accounting databases and like I could literally like I could do your your uh, operational security I could do like I spent a lifetime in IT I'm my breadth of um, skill set was wide and it made me a very effective independent consultant um, but at the end of the day you can only take so much of the capitalism um, it was you know, the hierarchy. I paid this fucking contract. You get in here. It's like, oh, for fuck's sake, right? You burn out eventually. You just fucking burn out. Um, and so, yeah. And one of these days, I'm going to need to find a fucking new gig like one of these years. And I have no idea. I've been out of the workforce for years. I've been out of the workforce since... I've been out of the workforce for like seven, eight years. Yeah, I think we're we're up to eight years now. I've been retired. Um, I'm a consultant right now. Can confirm soul destroying. Hundred percent. Just a good old burger flipper here for eight years now. Hey, structured enforced hierarchy is a fucking pain. I have to agree with that. Um, yeah, it, it's it killed me, man. It killed me. It was taking a thing I loved, right? Like I did, I worked with computers my entire life, not because I was getting paid, but because at age four, my mom put me in front of a mainframe terminal in a hospital network and it was my calling. I was drawn to it. It was a part of me from the word go. It spoke to my soul. Capitalism ruined that. It ruined it. It took that thing I loved and made me whore it out. So, there you go. One of the many reasons I have a personal bone to pick with capitalism. The healthcare system alone is another thing. I'm, I'm suffering immensely because of that bullshit. Um... But yeah, yeah, it's, I, that's, that's a transgression that will never be forgiven. Um, switching the job, hopefully to something more meaningful and better paid. This is why I'll never work in a professional kitchen. Yeah. Cause I, I, I enjoy, I'm a cook, I'm a cook and I would hate to be a, a line cook, right? Never find a job doing what you love because instead of not working a day in your life, it only destroys what you love. 100%. Um, for two, so if I had the degree, I'd probably teach. Because for those of you who know, I like I, I dropped out of fucking college like two credits short. <laughs> fucking, I figured out that I was paying for outdated information when I could be like there was money going out the door when they should have been paying me. Basically, I was like, why am I more current than your shit? Like, why am I updating like pop quizzes and shit for you? Like, yeah. So I I yeah, I left stupidly short of my degree dummy um Slavic you are you are take it do not take that shit for granted man do not take that shit for granted uh we as Americans are dude it's a nightmare it's a fucking nightmare um yeah forget just the cost like I can navigate you around the cost I can I can game the system for the cost but 
getting access to anything is a nightmare, right? Oh, Americans have the best. No, we don't. We don't. We don't. If you're a billionaire, you can get into anybody's doctor's office. But the fact that the, at the end of the day, no. I've had I've had do, uh, primary and secondary insurance, and I still end up paying eleven thousand dollars for a fucking procedure. Real, real story, real story. Um, I mean, for twos, if you need a consultant, let me know. I'll happily be on payroll, especially if we run it through a couple of. Um, <clears throat> Anyway, um, what was that astral? So far, I'm extracting wealth off the extraction system and giving back as much as I can. So far, it sounds a self-running point, but it's getting there. Nice astral. Um, fair enough, Lefty. Uh, Che, not at this point. No, I do not believe so. Um, Jesus, ML. <laughs> uh, yeah. Hmm. Neat. Um, I had, I found them the other day. I had 19 certifications by the time I was 17. And this is before all the net plus stuff. Yeah. I th it is, Jay. Um, I could probably like, I could probably challenge the courses. A lot of them, I could do like the the work experience, life experience challenge, fucking test out sort of shit on a lot of that stuff. Um, but you know, Astral, I'd love to hear more about that behind the scenes sometime. I'd love to like know some details on what that entails. Um, God, are you guys still doing that fucking vaccine argument? That's a thing. All right. Um, check the YouTube pay, uh, YouTube panel. Okay, all are processed. Nice. Um, <laughs> did you know that a woman only has two holes? Oh, good old two hold has. God, he's so fucking dumb. He's so fucking dumb. And the fact that he doubled down. And he ran with the misogyny instead. That was amazing. That was amazing. It was amazing. He was so fucking, fucking, women will make up anything to win an argument. Oh, yes. Yes, that's that's 100% what's going on there, Has Yes. People are mocking you because of um, fucking misandry. Yes, it's, 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 the, it's the women's cabal against you, Has. That's it. Oh God, that was, that, that made my day. Yeah, Slavic, he fucking didn't know that there's, there's not two holes down there for women. He, 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 he went with two holes as his answer when confronted by a, a, a female streamer um, who asked him, do you know how many holes are down there? And he said two. And then when the entirety of the internet made fun of him for it, he doubled down with um, women will make up anything to win an argument. <laughs> oh, and then he tried to argue it from like some like Lacanian perspective, I think. He tried to like bring in, like he tried to rope in Lacan, right? Um, it, like some philosophical argument about the real and the other. And people were like, bruh. You failed at basic anatomy. Just own it. Just own it, man. Like, it's just, dude, just to fucking take it as a learning moment, right? 
Yeah, exactly, Carpe. Like, just be like, look, oh, damn, I'm sorry. Like, I'm, I'm a, I, look, look, I'm, I'm waiting for marriage and I'm a product of the American educational system, which is just another indictment of this imperial system that I live under. And thank you for educating me. And this is why we ha- we should we should improve the, rela- uh, the the relationships between the sexes. And like, this was a fucking moment. He could have spun for his bullshit nine different ways. But instead, what he chooses to do is double down, accuse women of being in some sort of conspiracy against him. And then fucking roll out some fucking, like, bullshit philosophical take. It's like, Jesus Christ, man. (laughs) It's like, man, you missed an opportunity there, bro. Many women agreed with has, though. Yeah, and fucking there's uh, there's people that think there's a flat earth and that we've never been to the moon. There's lots of dumb people. Right? Like that's, 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 there's lots of dumb people. To be fair, all women are out to destroy Has. How's the horse paste? <laughs> favorite, favorite thing from the year. To, still to this day, the fact that we had apple flavored horse paste. <laughs> Still my favorite thing. Apple flavored horse paste. Oh, God. Oh. Uh. <laughs> uh. Oh. <laughs> oh. Do we still have that meme? It was, it was, it was, it was, hold on. Cause we, Caboose put some work in on those. That's BMN, that's shared content. Where's fucking memes? Man, Caboose, you gotta start fucking tagging some of this shit. Oh. I prefer the hazelnut horse paste. Um, GL. Yeah, basically. Um, Dude, he's got, he's got like, fucking just chronic serial virgin brain. Uh, uh, neat. Hang on. Let me try and find it for you then. Um, give me a second. <laughs> oh God. Let me see if I can try find it. Let's see if I can try and find it. Um, yeah, here we go. Um, at unneat. Okay, there we go. Uh, copy link. You're welcome. Unneat. American neuroticism about vaginas is because they're okay. Keep in mind. Keep in mind. This is after. Okay, this is after he fucking posts. Imagine believing in three holes. Women will just make up anything. Shaking my head. All right. So he lost that fucking one. Right. He fucking lost. Um, And so he goes to American neuroticism about vaginas is because their ultimate cope is there being knowledge in the real. 
For them, a vagina only exists when it's already known by the big other. There must be definite knowledge in the real. Its indifference is impossible. This is how you drive neurotics insane. What is more neurotic than making a huge deal over a meaningless technical error of calling the vulva the vagina? Still making errors, are we? Or not caring to specify the different parts. Nothing. People are literally being driven insane. The possibility of me just being absent-minded at the time or not invested in what was being asked isn't possible. Cope harder, bro. This was all because I had to have fully invested in the truth about P or something. Complete neurotic freaks of Twitter. And fucking even comrade DCS fucking Lamal. Just take the L and stay quiet for a few days until the meme dies. The cope is exceptional, bro. Right? Like... <laughs> like Jesus Christ, man. Just own you didn't know basic anatomy. That's all. I love it. <clears throat> yeah, it was super copy. Super fucking copy. Um... I mean, does anybody want to actually trigger the Cope song? Because that'd be hilarious for Makazaki. Got a fucking couple of chapters done. Fucking. Hey, one of our community members threw it together really quickly after this incident. This, this one, this guy, wait, this, 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 this guy, who are we talking about? Homie, I'm not the one coping, bruh. You're fucking molding like a motherfucker. I've been laughing my ass off this entire time. And you are molding, homie. Fuck the Chinese government there. Ah. <laughs> uh. Amorous, aren't the tankies? Uh, uh, fucking, we need to now make a distinction between classical tankyism and, and neo tankyism, which clearly, um, Mucka is neo tanky. Oh, redacted. Yeah, always re redacted goes for that, usually, in times like these.
Yeah, redacted. You've got you know, I don't know a couple of a couple of them. You've usually got really good time on that one. <clears throat> there it is. There it is. They always lose their shit eventually and and slide into the all caps. They always fucking do that eventually. This is this is why um fucking Slavic ML. I respect you. You can have a fucking decent conversation. I like Lenin. I respect you. You can have a decent conversation and you understand how to like roll with the punches and have some fun with it, right? This this is fucking neo tanky, right? This is good. This has got neo tanky written all over it. This is what fucking is roaming around the internet giving y'all really, really fucking bad names. Yep. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, unneed. I would say it's the same fervor. It's the same fervor. It's the it's the exact same thing. Hey, there it is. There it is. Fucking wait, wait, wait for it. Wait for it. There we go. Dismissal dismissal of you based on color of your skin. All right, like it's they're usually um usually racist, usually misogynistic. Usually homophobic, usually transphobic, usually puts down a whole bunch of indigenous societies in the in the process, right? And there we go. Um, Lenin and Slavic ML. That's what we're talking about. That's what people think of when they think of tanky. That's what you're up against. Just know that. Read that fucking message and hear it loud and clear. Yeah. They do this all the time. This is standard for them. I'm going to have to pull them um, and fucking, you know, do the typical reporting thing. But I left it up there long enough so you could read it. Yeah. They always slide into that eventually. All caps, that sort of shit. Yeah, it's 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 rough. It's rough. Uh, let's see. Let's see. In chat message. And here we go. Oh, and uh, yeah, just he literally auto he spammed a message so much into auto mod that it was caught nine times, I think, something like that. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I have the loosest, I have the loosest auto mod settings and it was caught by auto mod. It was, it, it, you know, yeah. It was, it was not great. Not a great message. Let's just put it that way. Um, yeah, Slavic. That that's that's dude. That's that's what's fucking walking around as representation. Um, and basically, most of has his audience is like that to some extent or another. Like, the, there's look, there's the ones that watch him because he's a fucking train wreck, dude. The gorilla thing is just off the fucking hook, right? Like, I get it. It's a fucking train wreck. How do you not watch that, right? Everybody rubbernecks. It's a car accident in slow motion. I get it. Watch it. But like. I mean, I'm a streamer and I'm an anarchist, right? Like I have been the target of that. 
<clears throat> I, 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 like, it's like, there's a lot of them. There's a lot of them that come through like that. There's a lot. Um, oh God. Hey, Will Alexander, Bethany. Uh, Will Alexander always does some really interesting creative writing exercises, shall we say. I donate $50 yearly to an organization that helps hedgehogs that lost their wings to fly again by using artificial intelligence and NFT scams. Flying Toaster, thank you for the follow. Um, Maniac, I'm currently trying to reform them in chat. I can save them. <laughs> oh. Hey, Memento. Yeah, I'm gonna have to. Yeah, I'm gonna have to do a thing here. Um. Yeah, Will Alexander always puts up fucking hilarious content. You, yeah, men private whispers. Oh yeah, I know. They always maniac. Feel free to post it to the the um the shared content on the Discord server. We always love seeing screenshots of molding tankies, uh, molding neo tankies. <laughs> I'll try and remember the distinction just for you, Slavic. Um. Yeah, we always enjoy seeing that, though. Oh, all right. So let's see. Check the let's check the YouTube page on the content center. Those processed. They are processed. All right. Let me try and figure this math out and then we'll see where we end up then. Um, all right. 44, forgive me. Yep, we're over eight hours now of the the anti ancap shit. Where we've officially cleared the eight hour mark on no ancaps aren't anarchists theory playlist. Jesus Christ. Oh maniac. Yeah, no, it's it, you know it's a, and it's a fair amount of projection there too with him. <laughs> Shay. Uh, yeah, they have they have little like they don't have they just want to yell at you in your DMs and they never seem to like they, dude, they're classic bully territory of like they, they can't they can dish it out, but they can't take it. Right. Like the minute you fucking come at them, they just start losing their mind. Yeah, we'll do that. Um, <laughs> nice carp. Um, Slavic it takes it takes more, dude, dude, dude. There's that's not even a number, right? Like that's not even a number. It's gonna take more. 
Right. Like this is this is why I actually run such a big tent and I talk to the fucking God help us. I talk to liberals and conservatives and people across the aisle of, and like all of the axes because at the end of the day, fucking when MLs and anarchists unite, there'll be like four fucking people. Right. Like I know I'm being hyperbolic, but the fact of the matter is, is that we make up the vast, 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 overwhelming minority of people. Right? So we're going to have to recruit. We're going to have to teach. Right? <clears throat> so. Um. <laughs> oh, redacted. Um. Does anybody have any suggestions for a raid target that is in single digits right now? somebody they like somebody they want to they want to maybe just starting out somebody that like could use a little bit of a fucking something all right does anybody have anybody let's do some digital practice Okay. I mean, we've... Okay, so Bitwin's definitely a fucking... Um, I've... I don't think I've... Uh, I I know I've raided into Bitwin. I don't think I've ever raided into Zachap. If I have, fucking... Zachap? Uh, okay. Okay. Well, the fact that I don't know how the fuck to pronounce his in name fucking probably tells me everything I need to know there. Or their name. I don't know. Fucking dude. Fucking Zach's name. There we go. <laughs> fucking there. Make this a lot easier since I already know it's Zach. <laughs> fucking. Just skip that step and go with the name proper. Um. Yeah, I know, right? It's a chap. Sounds more like alien. Um, either way, it's been a long run. Today is bad movie night, by the way. For those of you who don't know about bad movie night, join the fucking Discord server and join us for a bad movie night. It's a great time. It'll happen after the stream tonight, fucking 5.30 p.m. Pacific. So it'll happen around like 10.30, 11.30 p.m. Pacific, something like that. We, we get really fucked up. And we watch bad movies that are so bad they're good. Uh, it's a good time. It's a good way to decompress after a week of fucking doom, right? So the door is always open on that one. Yeah, night. I never make it always streaming. Yeah, well, maniac. One of these nights. Um... Is it really? Carpe, congratulations. Juan, uh, I'm in Las Vegas, Nevada. Um, Kez, I have no idea. I have no idea. We'll figure it out. Um, and yeah, Carpe, if it's a fucking two-year anniversary, fucking congratulations. Um, that's a thing. Good job, man. Um, Dan, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for hanging out. Neat, um, get the Discord link from down below. Um, stop by. Bye.